Hi, my name is Kira Deeds and Hi, my name is Kira Dietz, and I'm the Assistant Director of Special Collections and University Archives. I played D&D for a few years in high school and college, and then I took a long hiatus from role-playing games before finding my way back in the last five years or so. Uh, more recently, I picked up 5E, and I've enjoyed it a lot more than old, the old AD&D rules. Play isn't explicitly a part of my work, but it is a way that I connect with friends, colleagues, and the university community at large. And in many ways, it's helped my somewhat introverted self connect with all kinds of people in my daily life. So not surprisingly, I'm a big fan of gaming and social activity. In the last two years, I've started to explore the role of game master for a bit in a game called Honey Heist, which is our tabletop role-playing game tonight. We'll come back to the details of that though in just a moment. My own background in undergraduate and graduate studies is in literature as well as library science. And a part of my time was spent studying the late 19th and early 20th century children's literature of Britain and America. I'm a firm believer that the stories we read or had read to us as children have an effect on us at that age and can also do so as adults. I highly encourage anyone to revisit the stories and tales you enjoyed as children, or if you didn't have a chance to encounter children's stories as children, that you challenge yourself to read them now. As adults, we bring new perspectives and experiences, but that doesn't mean we can't learn something new or relearn something old. If you have never encountered Winnie the Pooh from the literary angle, this body of work is primarily represented through two collections of stories, Winnie the Pooh, written in 1926, and The House at Pooh Corner, written in 1928. In addition, author A.A. A. Milne wrote a number of poems about Winnie the Pooh included in some of his other works. Over the course of all the writings, Milne introduces us to a cast of characters who represent different things about us and maybe even things we desire. Wisdom, play, creativity, learning, quiet and loud, friendship, community, joy, confidence, and more. Even if you haven't read these stories, you've likely encountered my beloved Pooh Bear, who I still relate to on far too many levels as an adult, and his many friends in movies, cartoons, or other popular culture. These stories began as tales from a father to his son, custom made as it were, for Christopher Robin Milne. Edwin T. Bear, AKA Winnie the Pooh, was named after a teddy bear owned by Christopher Robin. The rest of Christopher Milne's toys, Piglet, Eeyore, Kanga, Roo, and Tigger, were incorporated into Milne's stories. Two more characters, Owl and Rabbit, were created by Milne's imagination. Much later, Disney added the gopher character to the animated cast. So what began as a personal gift became something so much more. The setting and inspiration for tonight is primarily the first set of stories, Winnie the Pooh, but we'll dip into the lore of how the house at Pooh Corner a bit since we can't leave Tigger out. As he might say, what's an adventure without a Tigger? Winnie the Pooh and his friends are each archetypes in their own ways, something which I want players to encounter and use in their adventure tonight. They all have a wisdom of their own, even if it may not always be obvious. And that wisdom can carry over into the world today. I hope we have a chance, especially in times when we may feel cut off from each other, to explore the joy, friendship, and community of this childhood classic. And remember that there are good things in the world. Stories, friends, songs, games, and of course, snacks. I hope that you'll get to laugh with our players on this adventure, and our players will get to laugh with each other. With all that in mind, a little bit about our game. Grant Howitt's Honey Heist is a lighthearted, improvisational, and creative game that admittedly encourages chaos and puns. I highly encourage puns. Our players are a small crew of forest animals, not the Milne characters themselves, 
with some slightly criminal intentions to get their hands on a favored prize, honey. It may sound simple, but they won't have a lot of information and will need to seek some advice in the Hundred Acre Woods. They also don't know about the trouble I'm ready to throw in their path. I've made some slight modifications to the game to allow players to create characters other than the trad traditional bears and honey badgers. However, the characters they've created were still required to be motivated by a desire for honey. So we've taken some liberties with the animal types while retaining the same useful skills you would see for bears or honey badgers on the character sheets. Basically, characters in Honey Heist have two stats, bear and criminal. Their goals are A, to steal honey and maybe a little something extra, and B, avoid going totally feral or totally criminal, which most certainly has in-game consequences. Each character has a role and a skill. When players ask to do something that is in question, they roll a d6. If they're using their particular role or skill, they roll 2d6 and take the better number. If they roll under their appropriate bear or criminal stat, they succeed, get a tiny bit greedy, and move a stat point from bear into criminal. If they roll over, they get a little frustrated, move a stat point from criminal, and move a stat point from criminal into bear. Players who get too close to going full bear can contribute to a flashback scene and move a point back from bear into criminal. Players who get too close to going full criminal can eat some mundane honey they find along the way and move a point from criminal into bear. As a side note, I find Honey Heist to be a great gateway tabletop role-playing game, and we'll be sure, sure to share the resources for this game, which are free online, if you want to try it yourself. The rule set for players and the GMs is only two pages long, and even with optional character sheets, you can play this game with a mere four pages of content. Since, for the most part, our crew will not be encountering humans, I've left out the optional human believability score aspect of this game, but it's a really fun element for more advanced games. In just a moment, our players will introduce themselves and their characters, which were created in a planning session. Then I get to give them the setup, which they haven't heard yet, and you get to watch the chaos and puns unfold as our lighthearted, slightly criminal crew runs into the joy that is Winnie the Pooh and his friends. Welcome to Honey Heist. 100 Acre Wood Edition. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the role of play here on the uh, University Libraries at Virginia Tech Twitch stream. Uh, we're going to preface our statement tonight with we appreciate your patience on our delay. We are trying out some brand new technologies tonight, so we are figuring all that out as we go. Hopefully nothing spontaneous will occur and we will not suddenly drop out of frame, but, you know, technology is what it is. Uh, so you've just seen an intro from me, I'm, uh, in which I have introduced myself, but I am Kira Dietz, the Assistant Director of Special Collections and University Archives, and I am your Game Master for our Honey Heist 100 Acre Woods Edition game this evening. Uh, I'm going to kind of jump ahead and let all of our players introduce ourselves. I do have one correction because I realized after I made the intro video, I accidentally referred to Winnie the Pooh as Edwin T. Bear and not Edward, and I would never let myself live it down <laughs> if I did not correct that this evening. <laughs> so um, what's going to happen is I will have our players introduce themselves, and then you will get to hear along with them the setup for their honey heist this evening. Uh, I'm going to start with Jonathan because that's the way I have people listed on my cheat sheet. Of All notes. right. Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Bradley. I'm the head of studios and innovative technologies at the University Libraries. Uh, my pronoun, pronouns are he, him. Um, in my job, I've talked a little bit about this on previous streams, but as the head of studios, I get to sort of ensure that we are um, emphasizing play and sort of all aspects that we do, uh, and that's one of my favorite parts about my job. Um, experience role-playing previously, I have played for about... I guess eight or nine years now. I've played second edition D&D. &D, I've played third edition D&D. &D, I've played some Fantasy Age. I've played a lot of fifth edition D&D. &D, I've played Honey Heist uh, multiple times with uh, Kira as the GM and a handful of other sort of one-off uh, role-playing adventures. Um, my experience with the work of literature is actually I've, I've watched the... Um, 
Winnie the Pooh specials that were on Disney, but I have never actually read the books. Um, and my character for tonight is Scraps. Scraps is not a bear, uh, but sort of is a bear. Scraps is a Great Pyrenees uh, who thinks he is a polar bear because I saw a picture of one one time and became convinced that that's what he was. Um, he is uh, playing as a panda, though, because he's adorably cute um, and will be the face of our party uh, for tonight. Um, Scraps is uh, he, him, and personality-wise, I'm going to play him just like a dog. Uh, <laughs> super excited about everything, super interested in everything. Uh, very nice. And I have a dog with me tonight, actually, uh, who's going to be accompanying me and giving me inspiration for how to role-play a dog. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks, John. We will jump over to Reese. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Reese Winamore. I am, uh, I use they, them pronouns. Um, I am a second year master's student in the English department at Virginia Tech. Uh, so play as it applies to my life. Um, I am literally writing a thesis about RPGs <laughs> um, and and their adaptations into other media and actual play shows and everything. So I um, I take play very seriously in terms of I am always finding excuses to bring the things I love just in my life into my work as well and into my studies. Um, I have about two and a half years of experience uh, with tabletop RPGs. Uh, role playing in general I've been doing most of my life, but uh, as far as TRPGs go, it's about two and a half years. Uh, most of that has been in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, although I've played you know, a couple one-shots in other systems as well. Um, and for Winnie the Pooh, uh, for this one shot, um, I have been a Winnie the Pooh fan all of my life. Uh, I, I watched the videos, I read the books. Um, I had a little Tigger onesie when I was a kid. And in fact, I unearthed for this game, my uh, Winnie the Pooh mug, um, which I got from Disney World a couple years ago and thought it would be appropriate. So I couldn't help but uh, bring that in. <laughs> um, so for this game, I am playing a fox named Alistair. Uh, he owes, he uses he, him pronouns, um, and he believes that he owes a life debt to Scraps, uh, who saved him from a heffalump one time. Um, and so he is sticking with Scraps uh, until he believes that he's paid that debt off. So if Scraps wants to pretend to be a polar bear and uh, get some honey, then Alistair is going to help him do that. Um, he is the... Uh, thief of the group is his role um, and although he is a fox he is taking up the uh, I believe it's the black bear skill set which is climbing uh, and as for personality he believes himself to be the smartest person in the room uh, that is unlikely to be true <laughs> um, uh, and so he, he considers himself a, a tagger on of this group who is perhaps being held back from his full potential, but his sense of honor demands it. <laughs> so that's me. Great, thanks. Uh, next we'll jump over to Alex. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alex Kinneman and I'm the Digital Preservation Coordinator here at the University Libraries. Um, play is mostly personal for me. Uh, my experience is also very moderate. I've played a lot of D&D second ed, some 5e, and this is my third experience with Honey Heist. I'm very excited. Um, with In terms of this literature, I, I used to love Winnie the Pooh. We read all the books um, and definitely enjoyed all of the animated movies as well, although I haven't seen the new Christopher Robin movie. It's on my list. So for this game, I am playing Nook. Nook's pronouns are he, him, his. And he is a real polar bear, thank you very much. Um, his skill set is therefore swimming, and his role in this game is muscle. So uh, Nook is a washed up polar bear, and literally washed up into the Hundred Acre Woods. He's pretty easy going, um, he did used to work security up in the Arctic, and kind of got bored. So he traveled around a bit to look for a different adventure, and happened into the Hundred Acre Woods. And that's all I've got. Great, thanks Alex. And then last but certainly not least, we have Alice. Hi everyone, I am Alice Rogers, manager of the Media Design Studios at Virginia Tech University Libraries. My pronouns are she, her, 
and play as it relates to my job. I've also been on the stream and talked about this a little bit, uh, but certainly I get to do a lot of playing with different technology and helping others learn through playing with different technology, all kinds of cameras and VR headsets and microphones, all of that. So that's always uh, part of my work. Um, my experience with role playing previously, I've role played and done some light dungeon mastering in uh fifth edition dungeons and dragons fifth edition i've also run a short and very uh uh quick game of honey heist for some folks so i'm familiar with honey heist and some of the some of the experience with that um with the work of literature i watched the winnie the pooh like tv series uh religiously as a child i watched particularly the one uh, the, with the rainy day over and over. I don't know why that one particularly stuck with me and the music was great. Um, so I really, I'm um, really excited for this session. Uh, my character, her name is Gran. She uses she, her pronouns and she is a possum. She's, she's, uh, we're using the sun bear skill set so she can find honey very well. And she likes, uh, she's, she's kind of an old, you know, used to go around and find honey and help out folks, you know, getting honey, but she's retired. That life is behind her now, but she, um, you know, kind of fell in with this group and is, is ready to help them get, get some honey, uh, today. But, uh, you know, she's, she's definitely a little grumpy. She's, she's a little, um, arthritic and she is the brains of the group specifically. So she's got a good head for, you know, plans and ideas, but she definitely, she definitely can be a little grumpy and, you know, also a little tired. She sometimes falls asleep spontaneously, but you know, it's fine. You just have to give her a little bump. Awesome. Uh, so with all of that in mind, uh, we will, you'll get to see our dice rolls tonight and, um, players, before I give you the setup, we've been over things and everybody's got the rules, but any questions about logistics before I give you your setup let's go no let's go <laughs> okay so the four of you are at the outskirts of the hundred acre wood you have traveled from the high beaches forest many miles away where the reputation of the hundred acre wood is well heard of but still somewhat mysterious more recently you've heard rumors of honey there's the usual sort that you can find in many places, but of course you can always use more of that, and this is new turf, a new supply, and supposedly in larger quantity. A new forest means new flowers, new bees, new hives, and maybe even some new flavors of honey. And then there are the stories of the Hundred Acre Wood, a seemingly magical place filled with things that you could maybe only imagine. Mysterious creatures like heffalumps, wootzels, and jagulars, and even a tigger of not only a north and south pole, but supposedly an east and west pole. Of the treehouse of a boy named Christopher Robin, who once lived among the animals, but hasn't been seen in quite some time. And best of all, a queen bee who runs a hive that seems more like a tree, rumored to have grown from a piece of honeycomb once planted in the ground. New honey reserves are a big score, but seeing if the stories are true and going home with something to tell about it and perhaps even a trophy or two, well, that might just even result in more honey and more fame there too. You haven't set, set foot this close to the Hundred Acre Wood before and you don't really know your way around, but despite all the rumors and tales from some migrating birds, traveling deer, or that jumpy raccoon named Stash who sometimes has some good intel, you do know a few things for certain. The Hundred Acre Wood has some rather famous inhabitants who know the lay of the land, and most of them are welcoming to visitors and conversation. Conversation that could be useful in your hunt for that sweet gold stuff, any other treats, and figuring out how to get around. You know of Wise Owl, who has many big words. Of Singular Tigger, who may or may not like honey, but has bounced far and wide. Of Not-So-Brave Piglet, who has encountered Heffalumps, Wootzels, and Jagulars of Shrewd Rabbit, who's clever at planning and has a network of fast-moving relations, of Gloomy Eeyore, the overlooked but observant donkey, and of Motherly Kanga and her baby Roo, who are helpful and fond of doing very good things. And then, of course, there's the great Edward T. Bear, Winnie the Pooh himself, a bear among bears and honey connoisseur, known to drop knowledge and even share snacks with those who knock at his door. With this knowledge in mind, you find yourself standing at the edge of the forest directly before a slow-moving, wide river that bends away in both directions, disappearing into the cool shade of the canopy of the Hundred Acre Wood. 
It's a warm summer day, a few nearby flowers wave in the occasional breeze, and the lure of a sweet prize or two is before you. Somewhere in this wood, there is honey, a very special honey tree, and adventure. What would you like to do? So there's a there's a river in front of, or a creek in front of us? There is a river, a small, it's, it's bigger than a creek, smaller than a large river, but definitely a body of water that needs crossing if you're going to go into the woods. Hey. Hey, other bear. <laughs> Me? Yeah, other bear. I'm a bear. You're a bear. So, other bear. You kind of look like a fox. What are, what are you? I'm a, I'm a bear. <laughs> what polar bear? Are you I'm, like, I'm the fox. Yeah, like you. Well, where, are you where, are, where are you from? Uh, North. Okay. Fear. You have a really big <laughs> tail for a bear. Yeah, I don't know what happened to your tail. I'm, I'm sure it's private. Whatever happened, uh, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's best not it. to... I've been dealing with this for weeks. <laughs> I think it's best not to ask too many questions sometimes. Yeah. Let's just cross the river. I think maybe, maybe we, uh, Alistair, just we should maybe, you know, climb on their backs and make them swim across. Don't. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. the plan. Oh. Right. I'm, a, That's I'm, good. A good, I'm a good bear. I can swim really well. Right, other bear? I am a bear and can swim very well, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hop on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> so those of you who intend to swim, uh, go ahead and roll for bear. All right. Um, All right. And Nook will be doing this with advantage because uh, Nook's actual skill set is indeed swimming. I'm hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that Scraps is hurt by this, but uh, Scraps... Disembodied... It's disembodied narrator set, so. ouch <laughs> yep. you are distractingly adorable i will yeah. give you that much and that will you know potentially come in so handy. Who, on swimming who is who is riding on uh whose back while we swim yeah who's riding on who could be useful is, how is it big enough uh is nook's back big enough for both of us <laughs> for a fox and awesome. a uh and a possum, definitely. I think we yes. both. Yes, then I'm Nook is very large. Nook. <laughs> I think we both are. <laughs> Maybe Scraps can just lead the way for you. Uh, I failed. <laughs> yeah, because you want to go lower. Yes. <laughs> yep. So, Nook, you are, this is your element. You are headed across this river with your two passengers, and as you look to your side, uh, your bear question mark friend scraps appears to be drifting slightly in sort of uh easterly direction the current seems to have caught hold of scraps and uh scraps is slowly Hermit. making their way in, in making his way in the not straight across the river maybe finding his own path. here scraps go my patented bear paddle has failed me <laughs> oh god do i need to go get him uh, Should we go get him okay i I mean, eventually, Scraps, you're, you're drifting pretty slow, so you, you are making your way towards the other shore, but you are now significantly further downstream. Yeah. Well. We could maybe pick him up on the land part and not on the water. I do not like the water. No, All right. No um, get to the other side then. <laughs> drop you off. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Scraps, you going to shake that water off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just like bears do. Nope. Um, so do I do I make it to the other side? You do make it to the other side. You're much further downstream than the rest of them. You're, you know, this is a little bit of a boggy ground, so you're all still kind of tromping along yeah. a little bit. And you can you can certainly catch up to each other whether the rest of you choose to go a little further downstream or uh, if you're going to wait for Scraps to right. catch up with you, you, you can certainly regroup. If they, if they landed and I've also landed, I'm just going to bolt up in that direction, like barking and okay. wagging my tail. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Scraps. Come here. Yeah, yeah. What? What is it? I start directing as if I'm like, as if he's like a helicopter <laughs> that I'm trying to help land. I start just, I'm still on top of Nook because it's boggy, apparently. Bring him I in. don't want to get my paws wet. Yeah, so I'm just like this way. Yeah, so Nook's just standing there with arms open, like, oh, he has to stop eventually. Okay. I don't know if I'm like, <laughs> just see me swim. I was swimming. It was fun. We, we, we did see you. Yeah. Swim. Saw a kind of swim. What? Yep. Not a, a not a bear oh. swim, but a swim. Mm. Yeah, I mean, bears swim differently than other bears. That's a thing. 
I'll give you that. Oh, all right. Where, where, where do we want to go next? Where, what does it look like around us? Like, what's kind of we're in a bog. Yeah. You, you, it, yeah. You, you kind of cross the river. You're in a bit of a sort of swampy, boggy little area. Um, you're already kind of under. You're not quite under the tree line because there seems to be a little bit of this bog before the land dries up enough for the actual hundred acre wood to start. Um, so ahead of you, you see basically what you would presume is the start of the hundred acre wood that you have seen from a distance, um, and it spreads off in both directions. On this side of the river, immediately to both of your sides, it just stays a little boggy, and there's a sort of open, swampy areas um, off in both directions. Yeah, I don't. Nothing particularly stands out to you yeah. at this point. You're just at the edge of a yeah. Forest. There's no <laughs> path or anything. Um, can I? Can I? Like you know, Grand sort of like licks licks her fingers and puts them up in the air and does a few sniffs. Can I sense honey? Like kind of see if I smell honey around or a particular way to go. You can certainly attempt to sense honey. And I get to roll with advantage for that. You roll that with advantage. That is your skill. Y'all, I don't know about you, but I'm very excited. Oh, I failed. (laughs) You, you're trying your best, Grand, but, you know, these are not your woods. It's it's a little unfamiliar territory. You've just gotten here. Uh, A little frustrating that you can't pick up the scent of any honey, but there doesn't seem to be anything immediately around. Uh, further down river, you do catch the smell of maybe another animal. You're not quite sure. It doesn't quite, you, you think maybe there's somebody else down that away, but you don't smell any honey. Per sure it's not wet dog. New friend? No. New friend? We have. I mean, actually, it's not exactly like wet dog, but, but it does smell maybe like a slightly damp animal. Mm, I don't. We have company down river. I don't. I don't. Um, but I don't know where the honey is. I don't know if I can help us with that right now. We'll have to get further into the woods before I can do my magic. Well, you know, when you go to a new place, ask a local. Best thing to do all the time. Ask a local. They know where to go. We should go that way. I like that. Oh. I like new friends. All right. <laughs> all right. I'll start lumbering that way. <laughs> I assume that Grand is hitching a ride on yeah, someone. Grand's, yeah, Grand's, <laughs> yeah. At all times, unless I'm told yeah, otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> Scraps is running out ahead and, like, stopping to sniff things. And then, like, okay. every now and then we'll run around. <laughs> Grand's uh, preferred Nook. method of travel is on Nook, who is a lot more, like, stable and not as, like, jumping around. And it's But she does have a little <laughs> stick that she can use to help her walk if she needs to. Uh, So the further down, sort of skirting the edge of the woods that you go, uh, the land gets a little bit drier, and eventually, Scraps, as you're running ahead, you sort of go down to sniff something and kind of get poked in the face with a little pokey thistle plant. Um, And you start to see those sort of... Bark, bark, (laughs) Fear me. I'm a ferocious bear, thistle. (laughs) And you start to see those cropping up, and then ahead of you, you see... From this angle, uh, a small sort of pile of sticks, they seem to be lined up against each other in a little a little way. And maybe the backside of something, you see something, some gray legs and a little pink bow, you think, ahead of you. <laughs> Smells a little like a slightly damp animal because the ground here is still not real dry. This is a little, little bit of a boggy area. Hey, y'all, new well. friend, new friend over here. Have I caught up with him yet, with Scraps? Are we there? Yeah, I mean, I assume Scraps is running circles, like running back towards you and then running forward and running back towards you and then running forward. So eventually you sort of all catch up and this is what you see, you know, a little ways ahead of you. We can let him do the talking, just, you know, he's gonna gonna do it whether we want him to or not, so... I'm gonna go go say hey to a new friend. Uh, okay, so do you do you do you address the the back end or are you? I just walk go? over and I'm like, hey, new friend. <laughs> Sniff him. <laughs> there's, a, there's a sort of shuffle and a and a movement and all the sticks sort of topple over, and you hear, oh bother, can't be looking for me. I didn't hear I don't, nobody ever comes looking for me, and a small gray donkey sort of comes out from the pile of sticks and turns around and looks at you expectantly. Hey, hey new friend. They're friends. Why did he ruin his house? I, I didn't mm-hmm. do it. Don't have many friends. They're not usually looking for me. Are you lost? 
I look at the others. <laughs> are we lost? <coughs> we are uh, looking to acquire some some honey. You might hmm. some special honey. We've heard tell of a special tree with some pretty miraculous honey. We're we're hoping to make our way that there. Would you happen to know any any such tree? Yeah, yeah, honey. We're here for honey. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm a bear. Uh, the, the small donkey says, I much prefer the thistles. Honey's too sweet for me. I had a jar that had honey in it once. And then it had a balloon. But that's gone. Well, no honey over here. <laughs> you seem sad, friend. All right, but do you know do you know where honey might be somewhere else? Like, we didn't ask if you mm. had honey. We asked where the honey is. Seems like you should talk to someone who knows more about honey. I suppose if you head that way and he sort of points vaguely north, uh, there's Owl. He knows a lot of stuff, a lot of big words, likes to talk. Hey, north, that's where I'm from. Does. And then uh, if you head to the other side of the forest, well, you'll start to run into Rabbit. Rabbit knows. Rabbit's pretty clever. And uh, Tiny Piglet is there. It's not very brave, but very sweet. And eventually... If you keep going, you'll run into Pooh. Pooh Bear knows about honey. Mm. So we should go to that one. If you see any of them, remind them I'm still here. And he sort of sits back down and looks at the pile of sticks (laughs) as if trying to figure out what to do next. You seem sad, friend. (laughs) Gloomy. It's gloomy over here. What are you sad about? Well, my house just fell over. Wow. Have you, you tried? Have you tried wagging your tail? Oh, that, that doesn't. <laughs> see, you see the backside of the donkey twitch a little bit, like he's <laughs> trying to wag his tail, but it doesn't really work because you realize that this donkey's tail is not like a normal donkey's tail. It seems to be stuck on somehow, and he doesn't seem to want to shake it too much. <laughs> You might want to try a different formation with the sticks to create a more substantial base. You know, you've got this bog land may not be the best. Find some good clay and harden it off and, you know, make a paste with some sand. And, you know, that could really, really make you a better home. Mm -hmm. Gran is smart. Gran knows things. Eeyore, Eeyore nods thoughtfully at this and he looks at the sticks and then he starts to push some of the the damp ground around with his nose and he goes better get to work <laughs> while uh while gran and scraps are distracting the donkey can i try to steal his tail um I, yeah go ahead and uh, I've, roll i've roll seen for that it is not attached correctly i am very curious mm-hmm. and my my megalomaniac tendencies have been activated. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you successfully, while Gran is is pontificating to Eeyore about how he might better restructure his home uh, in its next iteration, uh, sneak around behind and swipe at that tail, and it does indeed seem off. You, you get the tail, which is a, a short gray tail that's sort of little tuft at the end, and the pink ribbon that was attached to the top of it, and that was apparently held into Eeyore's backside. Uh, with a pin. It is I, now in your possession. <laughs> I look look curiously at the tail and the back to the back side of the donkey and then just hide it behind my back. Uh, I, I see you doing okay. that. Don't be rude. Put that back. Put, drop it. <laughs> drop it. <laughs> I'll, before Eeyore can turn around, I will slap the tail back onto him. Uh, Close well. What the, no? What I'm going to do is close my eyes and then attempt <laughs> to slap the tail back in the right place, and then go. Then open my eyes, see how I did, and go. That's what you call pinning a tail on a donkey. Am I right? I don't get. I don't get it. What? He's a donkey. No, I didn't think you yeah. would. It's above your level of humor. It's okay. Fine. Uh, Eeyore turns in a circle a few times. You think he's trying to look <coughs> at his own tail and figure out if it's been placed back in the right in the right spot. Uh, but he can't quite see, so he just sort of goes, well, it's not the first time that's come off. 
Well, better be glad I found it and picked it up and put it back on. You would have lost your tail. Would have been bad. Oh, you almost lost your tail? That's bad. You want your tail? How are people going to know you're excited? It's gone missing before, but it always turns up. That's good. Up. I hope my tail never goes missing. Oh, which one is this one's thing. ever been excited. Also, also, maybe don't talk about missing tails around Nook. <laughs> My tail is normal size, you weird little fox dog thing. Huh? <laughs> huh? Do we need to sit down and straighten this out? I'm the fox. He's the dog who thinks the he's foxes a bear. I know are white. Okay. Mm. Well, you aren't in I... the North Pole anymore. Um... Let's hey, I'm from there, the north. Oh God. Um, oh, let's no. let's maybe let's let's travel on. Let's travel on towards yeah to honey. Towards the 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 Edward Bear, Sir Edward Bear, Pooh Poo Bear. We will find him. Ooh, now he's been knighted. Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Seems appropriate. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna run into Rabbit and Piglet before then, right? Like that path leads us to all of them. Uh, if if you head north, you will head towards Owl and Rabbit, okay. which is kind of what, what Eeyore has indicated. If you head uh, uh, Owl's sort of, sort of northwest, uh, if you head directly north, you would start to head across the woods towards Piglet and Pooh, as Eeyore has indicated. Yeah, I think we'll do, head towards Piglet and Pooh group. Yeah. Yeah. The one that yeah. knows no, the one, one that, that knows honey. honey. We'll head that towards the honey go. person. Yeah, the other bear, the other bear, like me. The <laughs> what am I? Chopped liver? Uh, you're a bear too. <laughs> I pat you Eeyore on the head as we walk by him. Thank you, thank you, kind friend. Friend. Uh, Eeyore has gone back to pushing maybe some clay around, trying to figure out if he can plant the sticks a little better, picking them up in his mouth. Stuffing him in there. We we go to leave, and then Scraps turns around and runs back and goes, "Friend, friend, hey, uh, if you're sad, remember, just wag your tail. Sometimes you got to do it a lot to make yourself feel better." And he runs off back to catch up with the group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The dog philosopher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. We're meeting we're meeting uh, fun people, everyone. <laughs> it's a fun journey so far. We're gonna get some honey. <laughs> so as you begin to head uh, back towards uh, the west, um, you are, uh, the river, you have to cross the river again, but it's much thinner here. This just sort of runs through what what you seem to understand as having been Eeyore's space, turf, home, whatever he, he would call it. Uh, I believe his gloomy place is what he would call it. Uh, but it's very easy. You're able to just step over it. And the land gets drier and the trees begin to get thicker. So you hit a pretty dense patch of the 100-acre woods between you and whatever lies on the other side of it. Um, the 100-acre wood is not inhabited by people, so there are not very clear paths. There are no roads or anything like that. You're all animals. You're all used to this kind of thing. So you sort of have to make your way through the brush. Um and you end up coming across another stream, um, which you're going to have to make your way across. You can look around. You can, uh, Scraps may just want to swim it. jump right in. <laughs> there are some knockdown logs you see that maybe are makeshift bridges that some smaller creatures might use. So <clears throat> it's fairly easy to get across this bridge unless you want to, or across this, this stream unless you wish to make it harder on yourself. Uh. I think I'll just take the path. And or watch Nook take the path while I ride on Nook's back. Am I too heavy for that? Can I, can I cross it safely? You can, you can cross it safely, and yes. yes. I, will, I will cross there. Uh, Scraps was going to jump in, but he saw Nook cross on the thing. He's like, maybe that's what bears do. All right, yeah, I'm going to cross too. That's where, yeah, that's what bears are doing right now. Cross too. Okay. So uh, as you cross this, you do find yourself in the middle of the densest part of the woods. One thing, uh, actually everybody just go ahead and uh, roll for bear. Mm. We'll do it. We'll do an everybody roll. I want to see how this plays out. All right. I succeeded. I succeeded as well. Okay. Uh, so all of you, just as a reminder for our audience as well, those of you who succeeded are going to, your points are going to move, uh, 
to you being a little bit more greedy, so they're going to go from bear to criminal, and those of you who failed, you're you're going to go from uh, from criminal into bear. Uh, Gran and Alistair. Alistair. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it did it twice. But oh, fail was first. So. Okay, so you're a fail. Okay, so this actually makes perfect sense. Uh, Gran, uh, you are. You notice that you should smell honey in a forest, but you don't smell honey. It's summertime. You smell and and scraps. This goes for you as well. There are things relating to honey and bees that you don't you you. There are flowers. There there should be honey, but you you don't hear the the buzz of bees, and you don't smell any honey anywhere. What happened? Now this is a dense part of the forest. Maybe that's what it is, but you definitely notice a lack of something as you are making your way. Something you would expect, and especially given the rumors you've heard, something you would expect to find. No bees. Yes, there's no bees. There's no, there's no scent in the air. That floral, honey-esque smell. I'm not getting that. that what smell is like going it. on here? Yeah, I'm, I'm also not getting that. That that floral, floral scent. The floral scent. Yeah, I'm not getting that either. I, uh, yeah, well, we'll have to, there's no bees either, there's no pollinators in general, it looks rather odd. Yeah, there's no pollinators. Do you, can you tell me what a pollinator is? Uh, it's, uh, a thing that pollinates. That's... Do you know what pollen is? Uh, uh... Uh, we'll uh, it's we need ourselves an ex Yes, I think we need to find this this bear. How do, how do they find honey in this space? What are these rumors? Were we tricked? Are they just trying to get me off my old turf? What? what? <laughs> yeah, there's no... We're, there's friends. There's friends here. Mm. Tricks? No. Friends wouldn't trick friends. Mm. Well, let's, let's travel on. Wow. I mean, you say that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, d- I did. Uh, Never mind, you're I right. Did, I, did, I, did, I do say that. Anything. I did. See? Uh, <laughs> <your friends. laughs> huh? What? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. I don't know. Aw, are you worried? I'm just going to let these dynamics play. <laughs> are you, I love it. <laughs> are you worried we don't like you? We do like you. You're, our, you're a great friend. Oh, thank you. Great friend, Nook. <laughs> oh, Look. that's... Well, go ahead. Oh, where are we going? <laughs> I think the way. All We're right, continuing, so continuing towards. <laughs> yep, yep. You are continuing through the the the, the scent, this this part of the woods, um, keeping in mind this strange lack of things that you would expect to find, um, and as you come through this sort of center dense area of the forest, uh, there's a bit of a break in the trees and and some space. Um, and eventually you see a very tall beech tree that is sort of in its own sort of uh, clearing. Um, and there is a, a door, a small door in that tree and a sign over the top that says Trespassers W. Mm. All right. You're not quite sure whose house this is, but you were told a few animals live over here, so it could be someone. Mm. You, uh, should, I, should I go take a look? Do some reconnaissance? Seems yeah. appropriate. I'll Does stay here and figure out this sign. Does the W have like a bunch of space after it? Uh, no, but the piece of wood that it's written on is broken. It probably said welcome. Trespassers welcome. <laughs> that seems unlikely. Huh? Why? Mm, I mean, I suppose it could be, but... Yes, it, excellent. Tr- uh, mm. We're welcome here. Okay, uh, that's not worth fighting. I vote he goes hey, first. Hey, does Scraps think Scraps can read? I might have to make Scraps. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or is someone reading this? Yeah, I can read it. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> well, I'm going to attempt to climb the tree. Uh, You're gonna climb using the my tree. Climb, my climb, okay. my climb skill, uh, to see what's up there, what I can okay. see. So let's see. Okay, so you uh, start to shimmy up this tree, uh, ignoring the door and just sort of 
making your way up. This is a very tall yes. beech tree. How high do you want to go as high as you can possibly go? Do you want <laughs> to go high, part way how up? How high will let me see? I want to just get a good look at the surroundings uh, and see if I can see anything interesting. Okay. Uh, so as you climb your way up this tree, you have to go pretty far up this tree before you can, as I said, it's in a clearing, um, and then beyond the clearing, the forest itself picks up again. So you have to go pretty high up, and you're either looking at sort of this clearing, which doesn't have anything else but this particular tree, and then the forest starts, or you're looking over the tops of the trees. Um, <laughs> so I see nothing. You, you basically, you can see uh, heading off to the sort of uh, northeast and very far northeast, you do see some other taller trees that stand up above the height of the rest of the forest, but you, you're too far away to have any sense of what, what kinds of trees they might be, whether there's anything in particular of interest about them. They are further into the forest and you'll have to get closer to explore them. I'm going to climb back what did you, down. What did you say? Okay. Uh, well, I saw no pollinators, that's yeah. for sure. No signs of pollinators anywhere in this mm -hmm. forest. Yeah. Uh, there's some trees over there that are real Ooh. tall, but uh, that's tall. it. No pollinators. Well, um, I'll, I'll just pull the, the old lady con on these people in case they're really actually, um, you know, dangerous. So uh, give me a moment. Well, and wait, why do you do that? They're going to be friends. It's yeah, Just sure. to be safe. Uh, and she takes her stick and rattles on the door and goes, Yoo-hoo! Oh, I'm a poor old woman lost in the woods. I have, I can't tell where, where I'm so lost. This, could someone help me? Oh, there's a sign here. I can't read it. Oh, these old, these old bones. It says trespassers welcome. <laughs> there's, I'm being you... followed by a weird dog and a where? normal... <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> you hear a, a a a long pause, and then uh, if you n bang on the door again, you hear ah! you hear a squeak from inside, <laughs> and then there's a pause again, like just silence. Uh, I'm so I heard something. I'm sorry if I did I scare you, friend or pr person. I I need help. I'm so I'm a poor old woman. Help me out, please! After another moment, uh, you hear some, some more nervous squeaking. Not quite as loud as that. Uh, um, the door opens a crack, and you see a, a tiny piglet uh, who looks up Your at friend. you and, oh. and says, Help! Maybe, maybe I can help. I'm not very brave. It's okay. I'll, I just need directions. I'm a poor old woman. Uh... Well, I don't know too much. Um, what are you looking for? Well, we're mostly looking for honey. I'm, you know, I need I need some it helps helps with the joints and all in the digestion. It's very good for the digestion. So, um, I really need. And I've heard that there's a special sort that can really do wonders for the fur and the complexion. Uh, you know, like the special tree. And um, we're trying to find it. And we heard that maybe someone over here might find it, and I just got lost, and here I am in this clearing. Can't you, can't you help a poor old lady out? Uh, the tiny piglet is, is looking past you, because you are fairly similar <laughs> in size, but there are some larger creatures behind you that seem a little intimidating to There's to some piglet. weirdos following me. I don't know who they are. <laughs> oh, new friend. Uh... <laughs> But gradually you see the, the door opens more. Um, you are not invited in, but Piglet steps out and says, hmm, sounds like you should talk to my friend Pooh. Mm. Pooh knows all about honey. He'll eat all of your honey, though, if you have any. Ooh. But there hasn't been much honey lately, actually. Pooh's kind of sad about it, too. Yeah, I've... Maybe we should go talk to him. Do you, have, do you have bees here normally? Well, we haven't seen the bees in a long time. Well, yeah, where's the that's not exactly true. We've seen some bees, but they seem like the wrong bees. At least that's what Pooh says. I don't really know what the wrong bees yes, are. Yes, not all bees. Well, most bees are pollinators of some sort. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have time. Pollinators? That sounds like an owl yeah. word. Be I don't. Yeah, <laughs> bees are pollinators. Someone asked earlier. Yeah. That was the answer. That was the answer. Bees. 
That was. I just it was I'm it sure was on the tip of my tongue. I'm sure Owl knows more about that. Well, I can take you to Pooh Bear's house. Yeah, I've been keeping it. something for him. Let me let me go get it. And the little piglet runs back into the house. And there's a, a pause, a momentary pause. And he comes back out and he's holding a jar. And he says, well, take you, I'll take you to Pooh Bear's house. Uh, at this point, uh, Gran, your nose is twitching because this jar appears to have honey Do in we it. have any honey on us? You do not have any honey on you right now. Ooh. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've heard... I've really heard that there's some scary things in these woods. That's why I was stopping for help. You know, and that's why I have these... This group of sort of fellas friends. to friends. help me. Friends. Uh, <laughs> some friends, yes. For friends. Uh, to help me... Um, make it through the woods you know you might we could carry that honey for you to poo potentially if that would be so that we wouldn't have to go through the woods there's uh, another sort of squeak and piglet's eyes dart past you in a different direction that you didn't come by yeah there's a lot of scary things in the woods he seems to be thinking about something he has he has previously encountered and he says no no i mean you can carry the jar because i'm awfully small um, and he will hand the jar over to someone if, if someone larger wishes to carry it. But he says, I, I know the way. I have, I have the best way to Pooh's house. He's my friend. We, I have a path. And he seems determined to show you. But he will give someone. Yes, new jar. friend. You should come with us. I'll take the jar and kind of stick it on top for Grand to hang on to. Yeah. Um, can I look? How full is the jar? This jar, for <laughs> mechanical purposes in Honey Heist, uh, would be the equivalent of four doses of honey. It is not completely full, as, as has just been indicated to you. The woods are seemingly facing a strange shortage of honey and correct bees, as opposed to wrong bees, which you don't quite yeah, know we'll what that means yet. That. Um, but yes, this is effectively uh, a way for you all to have some potential honey if you're feeling a little too criminal. <laughs> but we have to steal it. Hmm. You don't know that yet. Right now you're just offering to carry a jar for a very small for piglet a who seems very pleased that he does not have to carry this jar all the way to Pooh's okay. house. Um, great. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep... I'll, I'll hold it on top for now, but ideas are percolating in Gran's mind. Uh, Scrap okay. starts talking to Piglet. It's like, hey, Piglet, have you ever met a polar bear before? I'm a polar bear. <laughs> he sort of squeaks, and you're much larger than him, and he seems very, very twitchy and nervous. Yeah. Uh, if you're putting out a paw to sort of shake, he does not do that, but he does, he kind of looks up at you curiously. Mm -hmm. And polar bear. Nice to meet huh? you. I don't think I've ever seen a yeah. polar bear. Yeah, you probably haven't. I kind of pat Scraps <laughs> on the head. This is a dog thing. What? I'm a polar bear. <coughs> and you're a piglet? Pig a piglet? Piglet. piglet? I'm piglet. piglet. Okay. Do you want to ride? Sort of looks up at you nervously but also intrigued. <coughs> and it, and, uh, or, so are you uh, heading on all fours? Is that what you're doing and offering yes. him a, a, a piglet back ride, as it were? Yes. <laughs> 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 Oh wow! Oh boy! Uh, then, then yes, Piglet will Piglet will sit on your back and uh, will happily give you directions on the path that he has directly from his his clearing, his grove, to Pooh Bear's house to the north. All right. But he is very yeah. nervous, and he's always sort of wiggling on your back, like he's always afraid he's going to fall off or something like. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's. This group of bears is heading out. Yeah, and runs ahead. Group of bears? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Scraps heads off in the wrong direction several times. Has to be called back, <laughs> corrected. That's not the One way. One time he <laughs> comes back with a stick in his mouth, and he's just like, uh, yeah, that's for y'all, in case you want that. And maybe throw it. I kind of take the stick and go, all right, and try to aim in front of us so at least he stays on the yeah. tra trail. He goes and gets it and brings yeah. it back to you. And he goes, you, you dropped your stick, friend. I'm bringing Did it back I? to you. I didn't want you to lose it. Thanks. 
I just keep like tossing it up every so often. It just keeps going and getting it. <laughs> good. Uh. Well, you're not good at holding on to sticks. It's a good thing I'm here to help you. All right, then I toss the stick into the woods. We're done. Oh. Right, <laughs> <laughs> it disappears into some sort of clearing or some sort of thick underbrush. <laughs> you lost your stick, friend. I'm ignoring him. I'm just walking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, so Piglet, unless you have questions or otherwise, will lead you uh, the short distance. It is not a very long distance to, to Pooh Bear's house. He lives very close to his good friend. Um, and you arrive uh, at another tree. Uh, this one's in a sort of uh, small clearing as well, but uh, unlike... Eeyore, who lives out in the open, or Piglet, whose house is built into the tree, there's a door that seems to be aimed more underneath, heading underneath the tree. Um, and you see another sign over this door. So much like Piglet had a sign that said Trespassers W, uh, over this door is a sign that reads Mr. Sanders. And Piglet looks at that uh, and nods his head approvingly and says, that says Winnie the Pooh. He seems very certain of that. There's a moment where Scraps is like, yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, Owl, Owl, who is very wise with words, told all of us that that's what that means. And so... He did, did he? He did. Um, right. <laughs> I'm not going to get involved. It's f- yes, sir. Sure, that's great. <laughs> not getting involved in the education system of the 100 Acre Woods. <laughs> <No. laughs> Oh, wonderful, um, wonderful. Glad you all can read so well. Uh, Piglet, Piglet looks up in the, in, towards the, the open sky and says, It's around 11 o'clock. Pooh will be home. It's time for a snack. <laughs> uh, so you see this door that appears to go into whatever home is underneath the, um, the tree. Knock, 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 knock. Knock, knock, knock. Okay. I imagine I knock with my, like, tail hitting against the door. <laughs> sure. Uh, and as you're doing this, Piglet yells, Pooh! Pooh Bear! Pooh Bear, we have new friends! Yeah! They need, they want to know about new the friends. honey! friends! <laughs> it's real excited. <laughs> uh, and at the sound of this, you hear, you hear a sort of humming on the other side of the door. Not like bees humming, but uh, as if someone is humming a little song to themselves. Uh, and you hear that get a little bit louder, and this door opens, uh, and on the other side is, you have never met or seen the infamous Winnie the Pooh, but everyone knows about Winnie the Pooh. That is part of the reason you've come to this forest, uh, because Winnie the Pooh knows about honey. Uh, and so you see a golden-colored bear, uh, very likely from what you would guess a sun bear, uh, standing on the inside with a honey jar tucked under one arm it appears to be pretty much empty and in his other hand is just a few little sticky traces on a paw that he seems to be trying to get the last of out of you know this jar uh excuse me excuse me one moment i'll be right back and uh gran takes the jar outside and like tries to hide it in the thicket for a second uh go ahead and roll for brains okay I guess that's what we're going to call this. You're going to try and be a little tricksy here. Let's see if it works. Oh, did that work? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, why did it do muscle? It did that to me, too. When I clicked thief, it rolled for driver. I don't well, know why. Oh, uh, we might have. Maybe I well, just roll for bear instead and roll with advantage. Yeah. Yeah, we'll that's that fine instead. if you want to do that. I'm not sure what we... I'll have to... On our break, I can yeah, check I think it. Oh. just the interface. Yeah. Boundary and see what so happens. So did you click that under oh, roll? Oh, yeah. No, I know it. Yeah, that, now I know it. That's rolling happened. for a new stat. Okay. Oh! So I will... <laughs> that makes sense. I'm going to roll for bear then. Or is it roll... roll. Or is it should be roll for criminal because I'm hiding something. It would be roll for criminal because you're using your roll... Your your roll is the brains of the operation. But it'll be with advantage. Uh, with advantage. Okay. I'll roll that. that click okay so you are not quite noticed yet you're you're behind nook and scraps who are much larger than you are and you see a a little rock a little log off to the side uh that looks like it might be a sitting log uh outside pooh bear's house and you are able to shove this jar that you have been carrying uh into that log and maybe you know 
push a little grass over the end so it sort of gets tucked away in there. Yeah. Um, and then I go back. Then I go back in. Sorry, I thought I, uh. I dropped my glasses somewhere over there. Gran doesn't wear glasses, but you know. <laughs> but she's <laughs> so dropped, she dropped her glasses. glasses. <laughs> Scrap goes, oh no, awesome. where are your glasses? <laughs> Uh, you know, we'll find some late. I'll get another pair at the um, at the Forest Mart. What? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. It immediately stops worrying about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this uh, adorable looking sun bear uh, who does happen to be wearing a red shirt uh, is uh, standing in the doorway with this jar of honey, and he looks at the jar of honey, and he looks at all of you, and he says, "Well." I am not a very good host. I don't happen to have any more honey. It seems to be disappearing. E- everything's disappearing. And he sort of looks around a little sad. And he says, but of course, that doesn't mean I cannot invite you in. Just please come in. And he sort of steps out of the side. He's still, you know, sort of licking honey off of one paw. Um, trying to get whatever he can out of this jar. Okay. And you see as you're walking into his home, uh, which kind of goes down uh, in into the ground a little bit and there's not a whole lot to it you you see one big room that has a dining table there is not necessarily room for all of you at it it's not a very large room um, but it has a dining table and uh, some cabinets uh, and you see either empty jars or jars turned over on the floor so it seems like before you came in he was uh, rummaging through the last of his supplies but he very politely offers uh, everyone who is larger a chair and perhaps offers to let those of you who are smaller sit on the table. Um, and he says, and he's looking at the jar in his hand and he get, again, and he seems very apologetic. And he says, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have more smackerels for everyone, but this seems to be the last of my honey. Oh, no. Well, that sounds like we uh, have the same goal then, because we're also looking for honey, and we were told that you're the expert around these parts. Uh, he smiles a little bit, and he seems a little happy about, about that, and he does a sort of little happy dance. And he says, I am a bear of very little brain, but I do know honey. <laughs> You've got to run for your money uh, here. What? Don't worry. <laughs> you seem pretty, pretty on the ball. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Uh, and he, uh, so he's in, he invites you all to sit and he says, I can't offer you any food, but I do like a song or a story. I can tell you a story about what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, he begins to tell you a little sort of sing songy tale about how, uh, there used to be bees and, he has tried to get honey from bees before and he tells you the story of pretending to be a cloud and of uh the one time that he tried to plant some honeycomb in the ground hoping it would grow because if you plant haycorns in the ground of course they grow Mm, in trees sound logic but of course none of these really matter he says um but the bees have been disappearing and without the bees i do know there's no honey and then he looks around and he says, my second favorite snack has also been disappearing. And you notice some empty cans <laughs> of uh, essentially Pooh Bear's second favorite snack is sweetened condensed milk because it does remind him quite a bit of honey. And you see some empty canisters of that. Uh, and he says, I had more. And then they were disappearing. And I didn't eat them. I would know if I ate them, he says. <laughs> Uh, He says, but I haven't been able to, there are some bees, he says, I'm I'm a little, he says, there are some wrong bees. And then he looks, looks at you all knowingly as if you should understand what this means. There are wrong wrong bees in the hundred acre wood. What are the wrong ones? What's wrong about them? What, what do they look like? They're just not right. Oh, he looks at Scraps very excited as if this is someone who (laughs) understands exactly what he's talking about. Right. Right on his right. level. Oh. Right. Well, they're the wrong sort of bees that would make the wrong sort of honey. They look like bees, and they mostly act like bees, in that they fly from flower to flower, and they fly around. But they don't... Well, most of them don't make honey. But then sometimes they do make honey, but it's the wrong sort of honey. And they don't seem to have any hives. They just seem to constantly be flying around the woods. Have you tried the honey? Do you know that it's wrong? 
Ugh, he makes a horrible face. I go, I, I move up beside him and I'm like, so see what you want instead of the wrong type of bees is the right sort of bees. They fly around and they also yes. look like bees, but they do make honey and it's the right kind of honey. But I don't know where they went. They've gone away. I can't find them. So, I wanted to so, ask them. It sounds like we have two cases of thievery in our midst. Is that is that correct? Someone has been stealing your cans <laughs> and someone has been stealing the bees. Is that yes, sound right? honey and bees. And I think some of my other friends lost some things too. Some things they like to eat. But I don't really know why. I'm more Got concerned about on our hands. my kind of did, treats because did Piglet? he looks sadly at the jar in his hand. Did you just accuse no, Piglet? No. <laughs> I was wondering if Piglet lost anything or had anything taken. Piglet Piglet says, I uh, mostly like haycorns, and as long as the trees are here, I have not seen the end of my haycorns. But I am very sad for my friend Pooh, because without honey, I don't know what he's going to do. And he looks around at all that. He goes and he starts, like, writing the empty jars and sort of, but he can't really do anything. He just wants to be polite and sort of neat and friends All right, everybody, up. I've got a plan. Oh, we need no. to get we need to mm-hmm. get rid of the wrong bees and find the right bees. Problem solved. Well, that's a goal. It's not much of a plan. Huh? What? What? Oh, nope. Never <clears throat> mind. Not touching that. Uh, who's, uh, where... Would you be able to show us where... I, I heard there was an owl. And the owl liked big words. Maybe... Maybe liked some... Maybe would have some more information about your wrong bees, potentially? Um, Pooh Bear looks at you and suddenly says, Oh! And of course, then there's the tracks. I'm sorry, what? what? The tracks? Well, the tracks. Things disappear, but, but over to the east of here are the six pines. Uh, and Alistair, you you could probably see the top of these pines. These are some of the tall trees that you saw sticking out when you climbed uh, Piglet's tree. Um, over near the six pines, a long time ago, Piglet and I, and Piglet goes, whoop, we tried to catch a heffalum. Uh, and then the tracks were gone. But I- <laughs> after honey started disappearing, I've seen tracks again. I'm sorry, back up. There's heffalumps What's here. What's a heffalump? Pooh looks at you surprised, as if you don't know, but then also looks at Alistair a bit surprised that Alistair knows what a heffalump is. <laughs> that, that somehow you all haven't communicated that some of you do know what they are and some of you don't seems to confuse him. Heffalumps are rare uh, outside of this region. Uh, okay. He says, uh, heffalumps? Hmm. Very dangerous. They I know. have well, yes. First of all, you know when you're near heffalumps because you'll hear them say, "Ho ho!" That's that's the heffalump call. Mm. That's also, odd sagely. <laughs> <laughs> their heads, strangely enough, look kind of like jars. Like they're round and sort of. Um, they were gone for a while, but I saw some tracks, and it's been a long time. I don't think they like honey. Well, I mean, I think they do like honey. That's what we tried to use to catch them that one time. But I don't know. Maybe that's I barked helpful. at one of those one time. Remember that, Alistair? Save my life, you yeah. did. I was like, hey, that's not how friends act. Get out of here. <laughs> the scariest moment of my life. Ah, uh, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Should have known. Should have known it would be heffalumps behind all this. And then, of course, there's the wootzels, and Piglet goes, oh! <laughs> Piglet seems even more afraid of those. So and that's a woozle. The wootzels. Well, guess they really don't travel. <laughs> just got here. Well, they have lots of teeth. I guess, for chomping on honeycomb. I don't know if they like honey. Maybe they're more like Tigger and they think they like honey, but they don't. Anyway, and they have very funny tracks because they have tiny paws in the front and big paws in the back. Kind of like, and he looks at Gran and at Nook and says, kind of like if your front feet and your back feet. We've seen tracks from them. Hey, Gran, wake up. <laughs> okay. 
Gran sits up and knocks a jar on the ground, and it. <laughs> uh, it was empty, but. I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll put it on my bill. <laughs> so I don't know if I've barked at one of those. I'm sure it'll work. Mm. Wootzels bark <gasps> back. You probably would have remembered. Do they have tails? You can't really know if something's. Do they? I don't know. I've never oh, seen okay. one poop. who whispers conspiratorially to okay. you. I will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a couple of. There's probably jaguars too, but they don't leave tracks. Mm. They travel in the trees. That's. Now we're into Winnie the Pooh's conspiracy theories. That's way up there. <laughs> <laughs> Alistar can try climb trees. Yeah, I didn't see any of those when I climbed that one tree before. You did not so see any at that point, no. Maybe, maybe there's none here. Mm. So it seems we have some contenders for stealing, stealing honey, stealing your uh, milk. Uh, gross. Anyway, um. <clears throat> What? Mm. So these tracks lead to a certain location, or are they just generally kind of around? Well, half a lump tracks have been around the pine trees. I can show you where those are. He says, um, we'll have to watch out for the hole. I have fallen in that hole many times. <laughs> uh, and uh, so Pooh can take you. The, the, the six pines are not far from here. He says, uh, they, I, I, I've just seen them there. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, not a tracker. <laughs> not going on the hunt for Winnie the Pooh. Doesn't have levels go. in Ranger. <laughs> it does not have levels in Ranger. Um, and he will, he, he will offer to take you there. And he says, beyond that is Rabbit's house. And then far beyond that, of course, is the tree. What tree? tree? What tree? Yeah. Which which tree? The honey tree. But the honey tree is sad. <laughs> hey, that's too. what we're trying to get, though, is honey. You couldn't have mentioned <laughs> that. Let's just go to the tree. <laughs> it's really great but having two of them. You know, the two the two people who... Two bears? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three. <laughs> we do have two bears boulders. here. That is correct. There, there are two bears ah, here. Ah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, so you're saying that the honey tree is does not have honey in it? That's the problem. Yes. Well, the honey tree is made of honey. Normally, it's made of honey, but it's not right now because <sighs> it's something's with the. You're really bees. taking on us. On, you're really taking us on a roller coaster. Going <laughs> away, and I'm not a very smart bear. I am a bear of very little brain. Uh, he tells everybody else was like, "You're a honey expert." Are you, yes, when are there's you just, honey, but the honey are you is just gone. Humble? Mm, do you know what humble means? Maybe. That sounds like an owl word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. Here's my question. Did the honey disappear from the tree because someone took it? Or because you all took it until it ran out and there was no more? Oh, no, the honey tree does not run out. But normally it doesn't. But something's wrong. Like I said, the bees are gone. There's only wrong bees. And the wrong bees don't make the right honey. Wow. Yes. So someone had to be the last person to take the honey when it wasn't replenishing itself? You well, think or, so? or the bees are gone. And without you know the bees Never mind. to make the honey. All right, everybody, I have a plan. Oh, no. We, we find these wrong bees and we bark at them until they go away. That won't, that won't bring the right bees back, though. We have to find out what happened to well, the right bees. I mean, maybe. That could be part two of the plan is see if the right bees come back. And if not, see what else we have to bark at. Maybe we interrogate huh. them. By barking like at them? Better. I like that. Bark at them. What? No. Oh, okay. No, we have to talk to them and ask and them. The, and the then bark at them. It. Okay. Maybe. I, it's a great plan I came <laughs> up with. <laughs> Are there some sure. are there some smaller like more surreptitious jars that I could like maybe uh maybe just like grab 
This is not my expertise area. You can attempt to roll for criminal. You do not get advantage because you are not oh, no. a thief. I think maybe I won't. Gran just thinks about it. <laughs> <laughs> you could clue me in. I, I know. Um, uh, side conversation. Al- Alistair. I have yeah. hid the honey for food that they seem to have forgotten about, which is excellent. It seems memory is not a strong characteristic in this area. Anyway, yeah, I've noticed. Um, there's, there's. I put it, I put it in a log outside. Uh, you'll see it. It's a city log. It's kind of like in there. Uh, but if we could get some Come smaller back. jars, empty jars, and just say, oh, we're, we're doing something. I don't know. We just to maybe so that way we could have some honey for later. So that way. You know, we got some food elements going in case things get real gnarly out there. So you want me to steal yeah, the jars? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. That? Yeah, okay, distract okay. him for me. Um, Gran starts to walk over and then, like, trips and falls very dramatically. And it's like, oh, my knee went out again. <laughs> Not again. Oh. What happens when you at, at, the, at the side of that, Scraps just starts, like, running around barking. <laughs> It's like, who tripped grand? <laughs> Nook's just like, oh my god. I heard the conversation. I'm just kind of like laying on the cold floor because it's darn hot right now. Oh, and it's yeah. cooler down here. I'm just going to lay here for a bit. Thanks. Uh, okay, so, so. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this because potentially you could have two people rolling with advantage here because Scraps, whether he intended to or not, is extremely distracting right yeah. now. <laughs> it's adorable. I know. <laughs> So, Gran and Scraps, you can both go ahead and roll for your various skill sets with what advantage. What am I rolling? Am I rolling for criminal? You are rolling for brains for okay. criminal. Yep. And uh, Scraps is technically rolling bear. for bear because using the distractingly adorable skill that we borrowed this from the bad. panda. Even though Scraps is clearly a polar yeah. bear. Okay. I'm like, s- someone tripped Gran and, and also Nook is hurt. <laughs> what happened to Nook? <laughs> Bark, bark, we're under attack. <laughs> in the chaos, I'm going to try, of course, to steal. Some, yes, uh, so go stuff. ahead and roll for Thief with advantage. Okay. Uh, right. Success. Okay, so everybody succeeds, so you all me. get to move a point. You're all moving a point from Baron to Criminal, from a, a logistical perspective. Uh, between Grand's uh, performance, let's call it, <laughs> and Scraps is running rapidly back and forth as a large bear slash dog in a not very particularly large space that currently has seven creatures in it. Uh, Alistair has ample opportunity to pocket some, I don't really know where your pockets would be, but you have ample opportunity to say, let's say, shiftily move some jars towards the front door, and maybe Mm -hmm. it occurs to you now that no one closed the front door, so you could just sort of chuck them out on the lawn. Yeah, if the... (laughs) Commotion goes on long enough. I'm just going to sneak them all outside. Okay. And then bring them come back in. Uh, how many jars are you attempting to seal just for GM's uh, curiosity? Hmm, let's see. Grand didn't specify. And there how are many... jars of various sizes, I will tell you. There's, like, bigger jars that, like, the kind that Pooh Bear answered the door kind mm-hmm. of stuck under his arm. Um, there are smaller sort of jars that might only hold a few ounces of honey. Yeah. So how you many have your pick. How would be reasonable for me to have? What's the upper limit here? Uh, with the scene that's going on, I would say you could get away with maybe four smaller ones because you could hold several at once and sort of scoot them out the door, uh, or maybe two larger ones if you wanted to try and roll them on out the door into the front yard. I'm, I'm going to go for the smaller ones purely on an aesthetic value that I like the image of my arms just full of little jars <laughs> as I just scamper scoot out, out the, the front door. door. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the sound of the, the jars clinking together is masked by uh, Gran's knee going yeah. out, apparently, <laughs> and Scraps' is incessant barking. And actually, if if this is just, just going on, I'm going to um, sneak to, I, I'm going to just run over to where Gran said that the honey itself was, um, shove all the jars down in there, and then open the actual... Uh, the big jar and sneak out one dose of honey for myself and eat it while everyone else is distracted. Okay. 
Because so, I'm hungry and I'm very trivial <laughs> right now. So from a, for our for our viewers, from a mechanical perspective, that means uh, when you start to go a little too far to criminal uh, and you run the risk of, of turning on your party and you wish to become a little more, more on the bear side, uh, you can, in fact, eat a dose of honey and uh, voluntarily move a point back from criminal to bear. So that is what we have Alistair doing uh, do to avoid... <laughs> And then I'm going to run back inside and, you know, just why, like licking the last of the stickiness off of my paw. Okay. Surreptitiously. So uh, throughout this whole scene, Piglet has done nothing but squeak in a corner, completely overwhelmed by whatever is going on here. Spar- uh, Scraps is barking. It's very terrifying to a tiny little Piglet. I'm, I'm, a, uh, and I'm Pooh, a scary bear. Pooh's... <laughs> yes. Piglet squeaks. You are indeed a very uh, scary bear. Yeah. And Grand um, and Pooh. Oh, oh, I was going to say, Grand says, "I'm going to go. I'm going to go walk it off for a moment," uh, and she sneaks outside and also has to have a little bit of honey. But then she also pours okay. pours the other two portions in the two small jars while she's okay. walking it off. <laughs> uh, and like this pass point. each other. Yeah, just like <laughs> out. Don't talk about it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Show you a thumbs up. And she also you. thumbs uh, up. Yeah. So we now have at this point. Yeah. Yeah, you have two. You you two of you have consumed doses, so you have two remaining doses of honey. Um, but we'll see where your trail takes you next. Um, Pooh seems confused and surprised at all of this chaos that has come come loose in his home, and says, "If if you you have far more brains than yes. I, <laughs> if you wish to help, we would be grateful." Everyone in the Hundred Acre Wood would be grateful. He says, I will show you to the six pine trees and the heffalump tracks. And maybe you can make sense of things from there. And then I will point you in the direction of the bee tree. The tree of honey, he calls it. And uh, Gran will look a little weird, but a possum has a pouch because it's a marsupial, so she puts the two honey honey portions in her pouch for now. um, Clink, 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 (laughs) clink. She just has a weird sound. Um, Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's just the knee. It's It's just the sound. Your bones are loud. (laughs) (laughs) And they sound very, very glass or or clay-like. I had one replaced. (laughs) <laughs> Gotta be careful with those knee replacements. Those are... Mm. They are. <laughs> get infected. Hey, hey, Nook. What does your bark sound like? I bet you have a good bark. I don't bark. What kind of bear doesn't bark? A bear roars. What? That's yep. just a... That's just a different word for bark. Yes, and I, I know <laughs> that it would scare Piglet and be very rude if I roared loudly in the house, but... Yeah. When we get outside... Okay. Better watch it. Interested in your... Parks. Yes, we should have a shouting contest outside. <laughs> outside. <laughs> yes, I Piglet, want to be very Piglet loud. looks very <laughs> nervous. Piglet looks very nervous about all this, and squeaks again and says, "I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home. I. I. I don't. I don't. I'm not very brave. I don't do well with scary things. I'm gonna go home." And as you and Piglet just sort of takes back off in the direction that he originally walked. Bye, new friend. Through. Am I that scary? He waves as he's like backwards over running. <laughs> as he's running away, he waves backwards. I look over. at Nook and I go, people are very scared of us bears. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Pooh Bear leads you out of his house. And he leads you not too far east. He's sort of humming as he goes and seems to be singing a song about the life of bears and not much caring if it snows or rains. Um, and uh, at one point remarks seemingly to no one that if Christopher Robin were here, he would have known how to handle all of this. Uh, but he leads you to a set of six pine trees. And uh, if everybody wants to roll for bear, because you are all animals that live in the forest. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm the only one so, who succeeded. I really <laughs> needed to not, and I wanted to not succeed because I really need to move a point to bear. Anyway, go that ahead. Does, that does move a point to bear. 
Uh, no, it doesn't. Oh, no, yeah, because you succeeded. To... No, success moves. Oh, yeah. I'm back to 5-1. We're in trouble. No. Uh, so, uh, Scraps is running around barking, as being usual. A, being a great uh, bear. <laughs> Being a be- being a great bear, but not a particularly good tracker. Uh, Nook probably too busy rolling eyes at scraps. Oh no, I succeeded. Yeah. Oh, you did. Uh, you're showing up as a fail, a fail for oh, me. What am I looking at then? Ignore me. <laughs> Roll a five. Um. So, what's your bear score right now? Because you rolled a five, it looks like. So you would have had to have. I must a, have been looking at the wrong been... guys. I'm at a four. Okay. Four. Yeah. So you were a fail. I am a okay. fail. I fail that. Cool. So <laughs> Gran is the only one who notices, although once Pooh Bear begins to point them out to you, and perhaps Gran does as well, you see uh, some strange tracks on the ground that do indeed seem to pace around this small copse of six pine trees um, and uh, disappear off to the sort of northeast, it seems. Mm, to the north. And Pooh looks knowingly and shakes his head and says, Heffalump tracks. Not fresh ones, but definitely Heffalump tracks. Uh, Alistair, you can go ahead and roll for bear slash fox. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I failed. You are 100% sure these are not the tracks of the Heffalump that scared you one day, but... <laughs> Maybe half lumps are different here. <laughs> are we sure that these are half lumps? They're not. Mm, that doesn't look like the half lumps I know. And I've been up close with some half lumps. Let me tell you. Hmm. Pooh seems curious, and he goes, "Maybe they have different feet elsewhere. They are kind of curious." Well. But anyway. Alistair seems a little more at ease than he was a moment ago because he's scared of the heffalumps and um, has convinced himself that they're not, in fact, heffalumps. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, this is fine. This is fine now. Uh, so whether or not it has just <laughs> evaded Pooh Bear's attention or whether Pooh Bear, as being a bear of very little brain, does not have the willpower or interest in investigating the missing honey situation, Gran, you do notice that these there are several sets of tracks that circle this grove of pine trees and then they do, in fact appear to head off in a northeasterly direction towards what Pooh Bear now tells you is the direction of, of the tree of honey mm. or the bee tree. Well, this, this He explains to you that it is the tree is much further across the forest uh, on the way to the North Pole. He says, as if you will fully understand yep. what that means. Checks out. <laughs> Checks out for... <laughs> um, uh, but says investigating for a bear, a bear, a bear, a very little brain is not, not his strong suit. Well, if he can help you in other ways, he will. But he is not going to venture further into the the woods and be reminded of this sad lack of honey. <laughs> okay, bye, new friend. <laughs> he waves cheerfully at you. Let me know if you find honey. Okay. <laughs> Definitely, definitely will let you know if we find honey. Whenever he's out of sight, I eat another thing of honey. <laughs> you eat another one? <laughs> um, and I say, we've got one more. If anybody is feeling a little jumpy. Uh, I feel great. I feel not not perfect, we'll say. Is it your hip? Mm-hmm. It was, uh, I, Sounds very yeah. clangy. Clinky. Don't worry about it. Um, and she, uh, does, Pooh Bear also would have warned you uh, you probably want to stay more to the north than the east as you're traveling in that direction if you if you stick to a more easterly direction you are bound to run into rabbits many friends and relations and they will have lots of questions and no one ever knows what to do with them even rabbit doesn't like them he tells you <laughs> Oh. But well, they might. Have. But if you head to the north, you'll go. You'll go towards the nice picnic spot. That sounds great. Let's maybe let's maybe do that, and that'll head. We're still heading towards a tree either way. We're gonna follow the tracks. Just follow the tracks. Follow the tracks. Keep an eye out for wrong bees, yeah. everyone. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye out for right bees too. 
And honey. Mm -hmm. We need some honey. So I'm kind of like looking at the tracks. Uh, like, how big are the tracks compared to my paws as a polar bear? I'm trying to get a sense. Uh, the heffalump tracks are are probably fairly close, maybe a little smaller than yours. It's not like the Wootzels that you were warned of who have different size paws on their front and back. Okay. Um, uh, maybe Alistair has had a different experience with heffalumps, but these heffalumps, which maybe aren't even heffalumps according to Alistair, uh, have, uh, you know, about a little smaller than polar bear size feet. Okay. Heading, off, heading off to the north. They're sort of a nondescript round shape, though. They're not they're not like you don't necessarily see like pads or toes or anything they're just sort of round little indentations that are spaced out like a, an animal that would walk on all fours okay. nook is feeling kind of fairly confident that he'd be able to scare off whatever comes up so stand pretty calm uh so as you are making this journey swinging more towards the north to avoid rabbits friends and relations <laughs> which is in fact a wide or probably a wise move um at one point you do pass uh, what you see a small garden and also a, uh, a hole in the ground. This garden is fenced off uh, and then beyond it is this hole that, that appears to lead into the ground. Um, go ahead and uh, everybody, everybody can roll for bear. Um, Gran, you're, you're gonna roll with advantage. I don't want to roll. Oh, well, that might push you. No, I'm good. I'm I'm, I'm back that. to two four. I'm okay. back to two four because I ate that honey because I did succeed. Back to one five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> keep needing to keep needing to suck down that honey, or else <laughs> Rand's gonna be so leaving y'all behind. Uh, so there are multiple successes here. Uh, Scraps once again very distracted by all kinds of things. This is a new forest. Whose garden is this? What are the things in this garden? Is there anything? You don't. None of you who succeeded smell honey, but you do you do sense a sort of sweetness in the air. Um, and in this garden, you get a whiff of, of something on the sweeter side. You're not 100% sure that it would taste like honey or it would be as good as honey. But it might help you. That little edge, that, that sweetness might take the edge off a little bit. Gran's looking for uh, anything at, to take the edge off yep. right now. <laughs> and at the edge of this garden, you uh, you find some sugar beets, which you could uh, pluck out of the ground if you were interested. Uh, you're not sure what this will do, but it seems like it's definitely like, you know, that sweetness that some of you might crave more than others. I go, um, go Gran, just to be clear, that's not honey. Oh, uh, you gotta take what you get. I oh, know it's fine. You to eat it. I just wanted you to know because I didn't know if you knew. No, I'm aware. Um, and so she takes one and like chomps into it really heavily, and just like kind of like tries to like suck out some of the sugary juice. Does that do anything? It it does, in fact, work. Uh, you have to work your way through. I would say maybe two sugar beets, but you definitely get some nice, nice sweetness out of that. That takes the edge off for a little bit of a cranky old. Oh, I can't. I can't not imagine uh, <laughs> Grant as like a drug addict now. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, that's. I mean, and also she that looks awful dude. now because like beets are just stay. Her hands and like face yeah. are covered in like red smears. <laughs> she looks terrified. She looks like she's just committed. Yeah. A yeah. Is there like just a like body of water <laughs> somewhere where I can like dunk her before? I stick her up on my white fur because that'd be great. Um, yeah, actually, you are not far from a creek, uh, or the creek that you maybe crossed before when you crossed the, the thickest part of the woods seems to be um, running off to the side as well. So you could definitely dunk. Uh, you are bigger than Grand. Grand does not have much choice if you pick her up and dunk. No, I, I, I will politely <laughs> ask. I'm not that rude. I, I will wash myself off. Much appreciated. I, go, no. I, go. I appreciate the ride. I appreciate the help. I, I understand, Nook. It's sometimes it's difficult if you get your white fur dirty. It's hard to keep clean. Yeah. Okay, for once, I agree. <laughs> Good dog. Good boy. <laughs> Tails wagging. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. Somewhere on the far side of the forest, Eeyore is like wiggling his backside again, trying to figure out if this will make him happy. <laughs> It'll work. You just got to keep it up. You got to fake it till you make it. Eeyore. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so you pass uh, what you might guess is Rabbit's house from what little you've heard that there's this garden and this hole in the ground. 
um, and you have, you know, successfully nabbed a couple of sugar beets. Uh, and far off, a little bit further to the north, you see what Pooh perhaps indicated was his favorite picnic spot. Um, and uh, it seems to sit on uh, the edge of a small pond, uh, so it's a it's a nice little area, um, but not particularly exciting. But about this time, uh, all of you become acutely aware of maybe the smell of honey. It does smell like honey, but all of a sudden, all that strange, all the strange things that Pooh Bear was saying about wrong bees and wrong honey seem to make sense. Like, it smells like honey, but it's not right honey. It's wrong honey. And as you cross sort of an open field, you see a very, very tall tree. And again, Alistair, this is one of the ones you could see from all the way across the forest, but you were way too far away to see anything useful at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's not a tree in the traditional sense. Um, the trunk of this tree, as you you can begin to make out the details of it. Um, it almost looks like a beehive stuck on a, a very tall, narrow honeycomb. So you would, you could say it looked like a tree from far enough away, but it looks like it is completely made of honeycomb and honey and beehive. Mads, we found ourselves a wrong tree. <laughs> <laughs> tree looks like honey. Well, you're not sure this is a wrong tree. This is the right tree, but wrong bees. Because the closer <laughs> you start to get, and I'm not going to assume that you're going to get right up to it yet, but as you begin to get a little bit closer, you notice that, like, uh, chunks of what you might call the trunk are missing, and, and so it's almost starting to, like, sag and bend, which is disturbing because it's a very top-heavy tree. Um <laughs> And that there are pieces missing from what you presume is the, the giant beehive that, that is the top of this tree. Um, so pieces of it are, are missing. It looks incomplete. It looks almost disheveled or um, sort of uh, run down, like in need of repair. And, and you start to see this. These, these holes in these spaces in the tree are big enough that you can see them even from a distance away. Can... Is there anything I can do to, like, see if I could figure out, like, why this is happening? Like, like what is causing it? If it's, like, moldy looking like disease or if it looks like bite marks or... Uh, at this point, you're still pretty far pretty away. Far away. Um, you're going to, if you want to investigate, you're going to need to get a, a whole a whole lot closer, which I presume that you're uh, going to do. Um, but... With all of that in mind, and the fact that we are about our halfway point, uh, and I think we just had a technical issue, we are going to go ahead and take our break uh, while our players think about how they want to approach this very strange tree. Sounds good. So, uh, I don't know exactly how long our break is. I think it's about 10 minutes. Um, and I did not give our producer any warning, so I'm going to vamp for... Try out recording 360 videos? We've got equipment for that in Media Design Studio A at Virginia Tech. If you're new to 360 recording, try out a GoPro Fusion. This camera features two fisheye lenses, built in stabilization. Active case to keep the camera safe between shots. We also include a cable and an SD adapter so you can get the footage onto your computer for stitching and rendering. Lending is available to all Virginia Tech faculty, staff, and students, so visit bookings.lib.vt.edu today to make a reservation. For anyone who has questions, we're happy to help through email at mediastudio.vt.edu. Thank you! There's a really, really neat collaboration between the university libraries and the faculty here. We got the 3D printer back in August of 2017, and then we started offering full service to students and faculty in October of 2017. 
we're able to provide a technology that might not readily be accessible, and then faculty are able to take it and go new directions with it. So this is a unique program as far as I'm aware of. I've only seen one other vet school that has been using a 3D printer pretty regularly, but not in collaboration with their library. The 3D models allow surgeons to be more prepared as they go into the surgery. The 2D x-rays, you can see stuff, but you can't see everything. And so when you do the actual CT scans and get it in a 3D model where you can pull it up, twist it in your hands and say, oh, there's this nodule I didn't know about, or I didn't see how this was connected and it's different than I was expecting based on the 2D model. Now you have that 3D, so when you go into surgery, you're more prepared. We can actually do a mock surgery before we do the real surgery and then therefore we have just a better idea of how the implants are going to fit or how this is going to work. We can show the owners as well and the owners like to, to look at it because when we show them just a picture of their dog's hip, it's a one-dimensional picture and they can kind of get an idea about it but when you come in and you're like, this is your dog's pelvis, this is actually your dog's pelvis, they instantly are, you know, they're captivated and they see that we are really trying to use the newest technology to help their dog um, or their cat. We've had owners that have come here just so that we can do a 3D printing of a very difficult case to help them as well. We're trying to again blend the technologies and have it so if you get a unique case that comes in and you want to have a teaching object, you have a print of it. A student on rotation, they're in for three weeks, you might get a really cool surgery, you might not. So this gives them a chance to actually see some other things that have come in and, and work with a model, if not an actual animal at that time. Working with Dr. Lands has been, you know, great. Being able to have the ability to preform the plates and have him show me individually this is what we are going to do before the surgery. And then when you finally get into surgery and he's pointing out saying, hey, this is what we were talking about on the model, it helps a ton to be able to understand and learn the procedure, which is excellent and priceless. So I work with Todd. I'm currently doing an independent study with him. And I didn't actually know I was involved in the ARIES program until I started that independent study. But I basically get to do a lot of stuff that Todd's involved with. So a lot of different um, point cloud projects and work with the library and stuff like that. So I can answer that with a little story about um, my work with Todd. So I met Todd about a year and a half ago and I've been working with him ever since. Uh, we met because one of my former professors recommended me to fix an app that had, of his that had broken. Um, so basically it was this app called CI Spy which fifth graders and, and other students used um, in order to learn historical inquiry on a site um, with an iPad augmenting the the uh, landscape around them. So it used a technology called Mateo, Apple bought Mateo, and then everything that used Mateo broke. So Todd hired me to fix CI Spy, but I ended up just rebuilding it from scratch. That's what I've been working on um, for about a year and a half now, and we're about to close that project uh, at the end of the semester. Um, and then intermittently throughout that, me working on CI Spy, I worked on a bunch of other projects. Um, all involving augmented and virtual reality. So I built sister experiences for some um, performance arts exhibits that were at the Cubes called Poe and, um, uh, or called Poe's Shadows and also Shakespeare's Garden. So I built Shakespeare's Garden VR and Poe VR. Uh, and then I also built uh, a, an augmented reality tour for the 150th anniversary uh, that takes you on a tour around campus and uh, helps you understand the perspective of people that were taking pictures here uh, in like the 1900s. So, uh, and then there's some other apps, but anyway, I've just been working with Todd on a bunch of different projects for about a year and a half now. I do research for uh, Todd. I look, um, I help with him coordinate with researchers overseas with a project they've done um, with Vauqua and Dig Hill. I just coordinate with the researchers they've worked with over there and try to learn about the things that they've found, the artifacts, and I help with the, with the video crew providing them information and, and, and getting them pictures and things that they need to help uh, illustrate the, the documentary more. So just working with Todd, I have learned so many different programs just like on the computer. 
um, just broadening my level of expertise within these different fields. And I actually, through Todd, have met somebody who lives in Belgium. And I might be going abroad this summer to get like one-on-one -on -one experience with them in archaeology and like actually work at an archaeological site, which is really cool. Uh, so many things. So just to name a few, the first thing is like circles and connections. So I met a bunch of people that I wouldn't have otherwise met that are interested in the same things that I am in, that I'm interested in. Um, like creative technologies and uh, virtual and augmented reality and like this this includes like professors and students so I mean it's great to just know those people and then it's also great to know them on a professional level as well uh, for you know it's always good to have connections uh, and then I've gained so much experience like this is so integral to my education here at Tech it's, it's like part of my it's like a big part of my education I've learned a ton of unity a ton of uh, like really specialized skills uh, that leads into the third thing that that I've gained, which is um, the uh, like the fact that I have all that experience and those skills makes me marketable to companies. So uh, I'm going to be working with Microsoft's Mixed Reality at Work team this summer, and that's pretty much 100% due to the fact that I have all this experience uh, with Todd. So um, great experience all around. Well, Todd has introduced me to the whole network of everybody. Um, the academic history side of tech and I've gotten um, a job through him. I, he's put me in contact with a bunch of people who help me further my career in this field. Um, pr practically, like uh, history-wise, he's helped me learn going through archives and learning how to um, just coordinate with a bunch of different people. Usually we're working just with historians, but it's nice to um, learn how to do research and how to apply it to to a uh, to, to different fields and to make a, a product with other people. We have immersive environments studios at the library and we're currently building an exhibit to allow people to walk through a physical and virtual reconstruction of the village of Vauqua and the and the and during the war, going from a peaceful village on a hilltop to a destroyed landscape and a vast array of tunnels underneath. This particular project was funded by ICAT and had components that were originally shown in the cube using the cyclorama. My role is to take the virtual world of Vauqua and merge it with the physical world so that they're as close as possible to each other. In the real world, they're gonna be walking through a simulated tunnel based on the Vauqua scans. So when you're touching real walls, it feels like you're in the virtual wall and it's all lining up. This project has been very exciting for me to work on, trying to think about from the, a visual arts perspective, how I can work with historians and educators, geographers, to infuse an artistic aspect into an educational simulation. Because this isn't just about showing someone a tunnel from World War I or putting it in a textbook. This is about helping you feel like you're there and helping you understand what it meant for a soldier to be in a tunnel being shelled during that time. And so it's about empathy and it's about feeling just as much as it is about information and history. We're really using a lot of advanced techniques that are forged out of researchers in computer science to allow people to feel like they're moving in a much larger space virtually than they are in the real world. And the thing I worked on was something called passive haptics, uh, and that's a VR term for when you have like a very low fidelity object, like a paint can, for example. Um, and in VR, it's much more high fidelity. And so Todd kind of had this idea. He was like, I want to have a person who's experiencing this carry around a lantern um, to kind of make them feel more there. There's also going to be a carving on one of the walls that people will be able to touch as they walk by, which will hopefully work out in the physical world and in the virtual world together. This project is an example of the type of efforts that can happen through the creativity and innovation district here, where students and faculty from technical to artistic to humanities-based disciplines can really come together to create something that's more than the sum of its parts.
Welcome back to Honey Heist, 100 Acre Wood Edition. Uh, hopefully you took that short break to get a smack roll of your own, as we all did. Uh, so if you're tuning in midstream, uh, our party of, of bear slash bear baby dog slash fox slash possum, not even sure what else to call y'all at this point, uh, have ventured into the 100 Acre Woods. And... Uh, I think we're missing a, a person, so I'll, I'll continue my recap. Uh, our team has ventured into the Hundred Acre Woods in search of honey, and also uh, for a supposed rumor of a a tree that uh, maybe is a bit magical in its own right and produces a whole bunch of honey. Um, they have met Eeyore, who gave them some directions further into the woods, where they uh, found their way to Piglet's house. And they have done a little uh, looking out across the forest, and Piglet was happy to bring them to the door of their friend, of his his good friend Pooh, uh, who has disappointingly informed our party that not only is there a lack of honey in the woods these days, but even the bees seem to be disappearing. Uh, which, of course, for a party of adventurers in search of honey uh, and, and and a magic honey tree, uh, is sad news indeed. So Pooh. Uh, gave them, took them uh, to the tracks of some heffalumps, gave them some information about some rather suspicious activity in the woods, and has sent them on their way. Uh, and just before our break, they encountered this honey tree, this tree of honey that is not quite at the center of the forest, much further north, um, which from a distance seems to be not what they were expecting, or maybe there's something wrong. Um, and that is where we will pick up with you all seeing this tree seemingly not what you would expect it to be not what people indicated uh and how would you like to proceed hey everyone look at that tree and then start going that direction <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna amble towards the tree it smells really good he can go first dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh scraps are you running straight up to this tree uh just just head in that direction I, d I don't know that i have enough focus to run straight to anything uh, okay. But I'm headed in that direction. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess my question is, how close do you think you're going to get? Well, unless something stops me, I'll probably just go right up to it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm giving a pause. Nobody's going to stop you. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think we anyone here has the fortitude <laughs> to stop. Scraps. Uh, uh, so uh, Alice there, uh, keeping his debt in mind, is going to go very. Picture um, the Willy Wonka meme. He's going to go, no, stop, <laughs> don't. From very far. I don't even huh? do that. I bring just in, bring slowly in some of that. gamble. And, and yeah, I'm, I could I'm have caught him, but I didn't. I pause. That's probably smart. I pause and turn around and go, what? Stop. Why? Uh, and about the time you uh, say that, Alan, uh, you say that, Scraps, your feet, your back feet, as you turn around, fall out from underneath you, and you land in a pit. It's not a particularly deep pit. You're not hurt on ow. the way down, but you have definitely landed in a hole that is large enough to hold Man. you. You could spin around a bit in this hole if you Stupid wanted to. Stupid bear pits. Um, they put them everywhere. <laughs> I look down at the pit, and I'm like, I wouldn't so even you fit. are all walking, you're, you're all further behind Scraps, uh, and disappear. all of a sudden Scraps foof, drops out of you. <laughs> Alice there stops and nods me if that would be the pit you mentioned. <laughs> Bet my life on it. Uh, the poo trap was actually back near the pines, and Pooh showed you that, that trap very, no. very happily. But this is... No, he's, he says this was complete certainty. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So Scraps, you are currently in a hole. This um, is an elaborate trap that was set. You're actually not wrong. <laughs> Any, anyone could have fallen into here. <laughs> uh, Grand Grand scans the area looking for other like similar traps now. Uh, yeah, now that you have seen <laughs> someone <laughs> fall into one, uh, you can see there's not a particular pattern or anything, but at various points around the base of this tree, um, there are some poorly covered holes. Um, that that appear. This is not the one that Scraps fell into. Is not the only one. I'm pawing at the edge of the. Hunt. I'm gonna walk up. I'm gonna walk up to where Scraps is to make sure that he isn't terribly injured. No, Scraps didn't fall very far. But for a 
bear slash dog of his size, he can't, maybe may not be able to get out without a little help. Am I to the edge yet? Look. Uh, I mean, yeah, y'all, you, you're all welcome to make your way there. Now that you know, Gran yeah, has spotted I think Gran is going around. Or you can avoid. Yeah, Gran's them. going around with her stick and like pointing out all of them, and also like poking and opening them up, and just being like, "Here's a hole here, and there's there a hole go. over it." Okay. Well, since no one's on my back, I can try to like balance a little bit on the edge and reach down to see if we can get him back up. Be careful. This is a bear yeah, trap. Yeah, you, you. <laughs> If you get down on the ground and lean over and Scraps reaches up, you can definitely yeah. uh, connect paws. So go ahead, uh, Nook, and uh, roll for muscle. Yeah. As you try to pluck your friend out of this hole. Okay. Success. Success. Uh, so you you grab hold of Scraps and start to pull Scraps' back feet or you know, digging up the side of this hole, and you successfully... Uh, are are freed from from that very elaborate bear trap that you ran. Thanks, friend. <laughs> Shakes off all this dirt. Mm -hmm. Ooh, some clap. Unless there was standing nearby and just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so some some very clever person set these traps. Everyone should be very careful. There's quite a few of them. Uh, and as you are making your way around this tree, Grand poking poking at these traps and making holes, so making the the holes open so everybody can see them, uh, you hear you hear a sound above you. It sort of sounds like angry buzzing, but but it's not quite right buzzing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of wrong buzzing. Like uh, if if you heard the sound of bees sort of muffled through something else like cloth or fabric or something and you hear it coming closer so it seems to be coming this something's approaching potentially from above you we've got higher we've up got in the tree company y'all uh and she runs back as fast as she can towards the group and like we, away from the tree we have company new friends so be ready to bark okay i'm ready <laughs> who, who am i, bark? who I am barking know. at uh, do you just hear starts that? barking just starts oh, barking. No. Oh, no. <laughs> go, go. oh I said barking. be ready not uh. to bark. Bark, bark, bark. Y'all don't answer fast enough. Bark, bark. Okay, uh. <laughs> I try to distract. Okay, here, boy. Here. Huh? Whistle, whistle. What? Here. Yeah? Come yeah? Here. What? Where am I going? Sit. Sit. So Good boy. Ah, yeah. So what you see uh, fly down from higher up in this very tall but sad-looking tree that is sort of, like I said, decrepit or something's definitely wrong with it. Um are, well, you suppose someone might call them bees, but they aren't real bees. They sort of look like, um, if you were telling someone a story about insects in the woods and you were describing bees, but they weren't really bees, they were like little toy bees that were made out of fabric and were kind of plush and squishy, um, that's what you see before you. So they have stripes on them, but they're sort of almost perfectly round with wings, and they do seem to be able to fly, and they are sort of angrily, weirdly buzzing. Several of them are coming in your general direction where you all are standing. They don't seem deterred by uh, barking. Oh, what kind? Roar? What kind of magic is this they have? <laughs> we should probably try to catch one and observe what what it's what it is these they're very odd and you should you should bark well, you should bark with me we'll bark together uh, and should i bark or do we do we do i stand do up and grab can, one or can they, what? i've got try and grab one with this contain i've got a jar empty jar here try and grab it with that maybe all right i'm back on my hind legs trying to hold a jar in my paw. i got i got you back so, i got you back i gotta bark at the ready and uh, so as you're trying to sort this out, uh, about four of these odd-looking stuffed bees, maybe wrong bees is definitely the right phrase, um, fly up in front of you, and one of them flies a little ahead of the others and goes, hey, this is our tree now. Get away. Oh, thank God you can't talk. talk. <clears throat> of course hey, we can talk. Hey, new friend. What did you do with the right bees? <laughs> we got rid of them. Scared them off. That's mean. That's not what friends do. <laughs> They're not friends. How close is it to me? We've got friends. They're not our friends. Bark. 
bark. Bark. <laughs> the ones that are, this one that, that comes up to you seems a, what, perhaps a little braver than the others because you see the three that were behind them sort of, you know, fly backwards a little bit as best they can. They don't seem to like this, this loud noise. But the one who's talking to you kind of chuckles again. <laughs> My friends make louder noises than that. Who? Go on, get out. Who are your here. friends? <laughs> Why would I tell you? We're trying to get rid of everybody. Information just makes people ask questions and stick around. You're not wrong. I don't understand what you said. Bark. <laughs> so I still got this jar ready, Gran. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that uh, we could have props without even knowing what my storyline was going to be. Dog toys. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. It looks like we lost some people. Yeah. Uh-oh. We we may have lost a couple of people. We'll take a brief pause. Well, I, I continue to show off my prop. Oh, yeah, that, there we go. that was perfect timing. Thank you yeah. for that. B-prop. I, I yep. love how you didn't go, look at what I have. This is perfect. You just held it up for a brief moment, and we're like, where did it go? Uh, in some respects, great prop. Uh, in other respects, yes. Oh, no. Uh-oh. In Uh-oh. suspense here for a moment. Uh-oh. Okay, Reese's back. Pause. Reproduction pause. Hi, sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, you're all right. Nope, that's okay. We had two, we two had fails. Two, yeah, so we're internet moments, so it's okay. It seems as like we, a... As we deal with... Live streaming! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> we're, we, this was mentioned earlier in the evening, but it's fair to mention again, we're trying out some new technology with this stream. So if, if things are a little funky, if we have a few drop frames here and there hopefully it's getting sorted out and we're we're trying to deal with that as much as we can we'll see um let me see good thing we're playing an improv yeah. game and we can all just <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i can vamp about my my bee, bee Where, why do you why do you Your have bee? That? it's what's my dog toy <laughs> oh I, okay i have a i have somewhere around here i have little hives that you put them in and then the dogs like pull them out of the hive. I thought maybe you were just like a bee aficionado. No, I mean I like bees a lot. It, it is actually a great prop. It's a little too smiley and happy face than the bees that are currently yeah, uh, in your face. But <laughs> trying to yeah. trying to make like a space brownie. Oh, there that's we go. pretty brownie. Yeah, that's solid. Yeah, there we go. It's as good as I can do. Perfect. Um, cool. Uh, waiting on word to make sure. To make sure we are all reconnected still on the internet. Okay, okay. great. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So we are back. <laughs> yay. Uh, yay. So, our, uh, so yeah, so there's this bee. Uh, he does not seem to be bothered by barking or intimidation, but I believe uh, some of you were maybe just going to attempt a capture. Grand, so I'm ready. How yeah, would you, do, do I do it? What is your plan? And I will tell you what to. To roll. Now that I know he can talk, it's like I shouldn't be this rude, but he's also being rude, so maybe I'll just do it. Get him. Get him. Be- being rude? Was that a that a bonus point <laughs> for puns? I highly encourage. <laughs> there haven't been many. I haven't put many in the game mm-hmm. yet, but. Being rude, yep. Be, be rude. Uh, since, he, since he talks, maybe we, we should begin just getting information out of him. Ah, get, no, let's, le- let's leverage. Get him. Get, get him. him. All right. He, he said we weren't reach. friends. Get him. <laughs> I reach with the jar and the lid, and I'm, like, ready to go, and I'm lunging for him. Okay, go ahead, Nook, and roll for muscle, yeah. I guess. It's not that it takes muscle to catch this bee, but we will call this a muscle-related skill, since you're going to try and snag this bee in a jar. Ah. Success. Uh, yes, so you grab this bee in this empty jar, uh, and uh, he is banging up against the glass like very upset about this uh and the other three who were kind of behind him uh look at each other in confusion as much as bees can look at each other in confusion and then seem to uh start to dart back up the tree yeah i barked at him and they left i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it down to the ground so that gran can see and also i'm feeling not so hot right now Um, would you like some Woods, I have some real honey, and I also have some beets. Hey, where did you get that honey from? Oh, boy. Don't ask questions. <laughs> Don't, worry about Don't it. ask questions. Did you bring um, that with you? 
You, sure. I will also tell you now that you are this close to the the the, the tree of honey itself, uh, as as sad or lacking or 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 whatever is wrong with it as it seems to be, um, there there's still some honey, and and the trunk itself is made of honeycomb, mm-hmm. so you can get a little snack roll uh, from the tree itself if you would like to, and it will work. Um, it does taste a little sad, a little bland, but it's still still honey, and it does the this job. This wasn't the real stash that I thought that we'd find here. But, you know, it'll do. Um, but you're welcome to this honey, Nook. And I give it to Nook. And I um, I have, so we have one, like, for our four jars, one jar is a bee and one jar I just gave to Nook, but I'll fill up. Well, you can get, you yeah, can fill up from fill the tree up. with any empty, any empty jars you have now. Sorry, I'm being attacked by a cat during this time as well. Uh, <laughs> So you can fill up the two empty jars that you have, yeah. uh, and then you have one with a bee in it. We'll see what the circumstances with him are and whether you'll have another empty jar or not. <laughs> but you have a bee in a jar who is very angry and trying very hard to get out, but has no chance of doing so Scrap. against the large muscles and power Scrap of goes, him. I'll handle this interrogation. Hey, you in the jar, why won't you be friends with me? <laughs> You can't, you, you hear a lot of buzzing. You're not sure if there are words again. It's kind of hard to hear through the, the, the clay and the cover of this jar. He said, it, he said if we let him out, he'll be my friend. Uh, unless there are kind of elbows, scraps huh? out of the way a little bit. <laughs> and kneels down and goes, who are these friends you mentioned before? That's also a good question. You should answer that question, too. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, this, this angry bee in a, in a glass jar is still sort of staring at you. Um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to decide what I want to make people <laughs> roll for. We don't have intimidation. <laughs> no, but you do have a face who was attempting to be, uh, friendly. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, so Scraps and Alistair, why don't you both go ahead and uh, Alistair roll for bear slash fox. Uh, and Scraps, go ahead and roll for face. We're going to see if your approach works. Maybe it, it will. You don't I know. I rolled a one. <laughs> and we both succeeded somehow. So somehow this this bee is both uh, intimidated and... Good bear, bad bear. Really good, yeah. And, yeah, you got some good bear, good, good dog, bad dog, fox. Bad fox. <laughs> I'm fully in favor of this. Uh, and this bee, uh, he sort of stops, you know, slamming slim, up against the sides of the jar, and he seems to just hover there calmly, and he goes, I can't, yeah, I can't tie you to the jar, you know, I, just he seems to be saying Trying to talk to us. Open it just a tiny get a little just, tiny just, bit, and then hold that, you know, really hold your muscles that way. So you crack the jar a little bit? Not <laughs> <laughs> Rubik's Cube style. <laughs> you know, it has little. a twist lid. A twist lid, you know. Uh, and the uh, the the bee in the jar says, mm, "I mean, to be fair, you do seem a little nicer than my other yeah, friends." I'm I'm the nicest. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know if you know, but that's I'm, definitely true. I'm a good bear. The bee sort of looks at you. And he says, yeah, and I'm a good yeah. bee. <laughs> no, you aren't. You're not a good bee. Hey, 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 making... you let me handle this. You're a good mm. bee. <laughs> who, who are he your says, friends? Uh, and when, why will they also be friends with me? <laughs> mm, I don't oh. think so. He says, I told you, uh, our job, we're working for the big guys. And he sort of gestures as much as you can gesture with a wing while trapped in a small glass jar. Um, further off to the northeast. This is working for the, the big guys. We told who you. Are the big guys. We're supposed to help get everybody to leave because the big guys want the woods. Mm. Can you describe the big guys for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. He goes, by the way, not that anyone asked, my name is Herbie. Hi, Herbie. You know. Feels I'm, like he wants I'm to scraps. introduce himself. You don't need to know my name. Mm. Keep talking. <laughs> okay. I growl just, you know, 
to make sure he gets it. <laughs> he backs further into the jar again. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> go ahead. Did you want to? Scraps have why, why are we <laughs> growling at a friend? Uh, and so Herbie tells you uh, he works for. Uh, he says they have a big fancy word. I think that big old bird knows that word too. What is, is it? Uh, Himpful lump, humpful lumps, mm-hmm. humpful lumps. Oh yeah, 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 that's one of them. But they call themselves a uh, tree. Pollinators. Tree umbrate. Tree umbrate. That's Pollinate, what it is. No tree. Um- no, 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 no pollinators okay. here. We just pretend. That's our job. So we're they decoys. Have something to do with trees. Pret- we're decoys. Pretendinators. And we're spies. Pret- he tells you kind of proudly. Pretendinators. <laughs> Poly- Ooh, that's Polytenders. a good one. They are pre- Well, we're pretendinators. Yeah. We can make something that kind of is honey, but it's not really honey. But we don't tell people. I shouldn't have told you. That. I should have. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. Ah, you're. You're. And he's looking around you're nervously. A good, you're a good uh, bee. He says, "Yeah." There's, there's the heffalumps. They're kind of. Then he sort of gestures up towards Nook and goes, "They're the muscle." Kind of like that one. And me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. And uh, and then there's the Wootzels. I don't. I don't work for them too much. I mean, I basically report to the mm-hmm. heffalumps, but then the Wootzels, and then I think, but I can't be sure because I've never seen one. I don't know anybody that's seen one. Supposedly, there's some jaguars at the top. Oh, yeah. Well, there must be, because that must be where the tree and tree umber comes from. So yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they, go, they, make, they, they do hang out in trees, and then yeah. they drop on you when you, yeah. That's, See, we don't need that owl guy. Hmm. No, no, no I just meant that that bird knows big words. Yeah, we know words. Tree umber, easy. Politenders. Anyway, we work for them. We have been messing up this tree. We're trying to make everybody leave. Oh, I'm not supposed to tell you all this. But you're a good uh, bee. Yeah. We appreciate the But am, mm, how, who made you're not a bee? What, who made you? What's the deal? Wow. His eyes get as big as a bee's wow. eyes can wow. get. Wow. <laughs> wow, Grant. And he, he he sort of buzzes back towards the back of the jar again, and he just sit. He like drops to the bottom. And I go, like, hey, hey, don't listen to them. I've said too much. You're. Listen, Let a, me go. <laughs> you're in the business in this group of letting people pretend to be animals if they want to be. The business? Oh, I know all about the business, he says. <laughs> what? Bees nest. Uh, it's fine. You can let him go. We He's got, sort of pouting in the back. In the we bottom got what of the we jar want now. We got everything we need to know. Hang on. Can you tell us where the triumvirate meets? Where can we find them? Uh, he sort of waves a wing again further further to the northeast. But he doesn't it, you're not sure if he doesn't if he doesn't know or if he doesn't want to tell you. Uh, he seems a little a little uh, sad and upset about being told that he's not a bee. That's fair. He's he maybe he's a wrong bee, but he's still a bee. It's not nice being told you're not the thing you are. Oh for goodness sakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can well it's up to you you can take you can keep him in this jar and bring no. him along with you you can let we'll him let, go we'll you let can... Herbie go I would let Herbie go I would say you know you can let him go you can let him go it's fine mm-hmm. we got what we needed bye friend he he flies out of the jar and he kind of looks at you and he, and he says well for what it's worth I don't know if their plans were ever going to work I mean we've been working hard on trying to destroy this tree but it keeps coming back. Uh, he says, look. I don't know if I want to help you. But I'll give you some time. I'll take my guys. And we'll disappear for a little while. Maybe you can figure out a solution. Yeah. He says, there's really nothing in it for us. Uh, and so you see him uh, head back up the tree. And there's some little bee dancing slash conversation. And there were the three bees that were with him, but then also as you see them sort of fly off, not towards the northeast where he's indicated that the, the triumvirate is, uh, but more to the uh, northwest direction, off towards the picnic spot and the pond, you see uh, probably about 25 of these wrong bees take off in that direction. Bye, friends. And, and as they disappear, uh, 
from behind you, you hear uh, a buzzing, but it's a right kind of buzzing. Like a real bee. Ooh, new friends. <laughs> Got some real bees coming. Uh, and as you, 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 as you turn around, you do in fact see two real bees. They smell like bees. They buzz like bees. They all that that good stuff. Uh, who are uh, approaching you, uh, and they sort of dance around, bob in front of you. Um, and one of them, after a pause, says, "My name is Beak." It's B E E K for any of you keeping track of my bee jokes. Uh, <laughs> we come on behalf of her hiveness, Queen Elizabeth the <laughs> First. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, and that's how I take out Grant. <laughs> uh, and they they begin to, these two bees explain to you Beak, and the other one introduces himself as Beef. Uh, got a little theme going. <laughs> they explain to you that they, in fact, are the bees from the Great Hive at the top of the tree. And uh, when they were bullied out by these wrong bees, which they also call them wrong bees, uh, they have gone into hiding with their queen. Uh, but in the interim, the tree has fallen to disrepair and is no longer making honey. And as long as all of the bees in the forest are hiding, because this is essentially where they all come from, uh, there is no more honey in the Hundred Acre Wood. Oh well, no, but that's what that's and what I'm then. Here for. Then these horrible bees and their triumvirate started stealing other people's honey and other sweet things. Mm. As as Her- Herbie told you, in an attempt to drive the inhabitants of the Hundred Acre uh, Wood out. Yeah. I think I get it. But if you are willing to help solve this problem, the queen will be happy to reward you. So I think I get it, but I do have one question. Will you be my friends? <laughs> Do you not have enough friends? Yes. No. Oh, they never. bob up and down and uh, they sort of uh, dance around your head a little bit. Yeah. A little, they, they seem very excited at the idea of a very large friend. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'm, we're all... Especially one who contributed to driving away, because all they saw is the, 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 the not bees, the wrong bees flying away. So they are fully of the mindset that you have driven the wrong bees away for them and are going to help them. They've been waiting and watching for someone to come along and help help them. Well, we're big fans of honey here, so especially if you've got some of the... So are we! <laughs> real sweet stuff. We're yep. really excited for that. Yep. Um, Us bears, we like honey. And, and possums, too. Yeah. Just saying. I mean... Some, I- of, some of us just go <laughs> tears. <laughs> All right. Beef beef goes, yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um and so I think uh Grant would also uh also those bees are gonna come back if we can't fix the situation, so just keep that in mind. They could be back. But in the meantime, while they're gone, why don't you bring all your friends out here and start producing again? And uh we'll take care mm. of your problem for you. I mean we can go ask the queen, but I don't. I don't think she's gonna be interested in coming back till there's a guarantee. We're all clear. All right, we'll go work on the problem. Let's go make some new friends, everyone. <laughs> uh, they will offer. Uh, Beef will offer to guide you further. He says, "I know we don't know exactly where they are, but we know what direction they are, and we kind of know we'll we'll be able to smell our honey." Mm-hmm. So, uh, Beef offers to be your guide. Uh, and Beak is going to go back and tell the hive in hiding that someone has come to help at last. Sounds good. And they may need to muster some forces, depending on what happens next. All right. We'll follow Beef. But so before, Beef leads before we you. we do that, we should probably oh, yeah. grab some extra honey just yeah. in case. I'm going to need another hit. Someone just think so one empty jar. Yeah, I think you can take a hit from the tree while you're yeah, here. Anybody and needs you a can hit. Fill your other yeah, jar. I might actually take a hit as well. <laughs> Y'all are rolling really well, so you're not having the other problem. Yeah, and yeah. so we'll have four stores of honey um, 
if someone would like to carry, I, I don't know how much the possum's pouch can hold, but I think, uh, I, mm, you've got to be, I know, I mean, maybe just four stores of honey and not the sh- two sugar beet ones, especially since I'll hold the sugar beets and just kind of juggle them. Okay. So we've got six total possible. Okay. You said that. So now I'm going to make you roll for thief because <laughs> I want to see how your dexterity for juggling is. I'm rolling for thief. Okay. Yes. Go <laughs> roll for thief. So with advantage. Mm, you're you're very good at that. Uh, Alistair's a really good beat juggler. Who knew? <laughs> In another life, man. Been and Grant, if it gets to be too much, you can probably like stick them in my fur somewhere. There's got to yeah, be okay. space. That's what that is what the pouch is for. <laughs> That's what I've been doing this whole time, <laughs> just without telling you. you know, uh, at some point. <laughs> Having done that, at some point during the walk, I will take a break from juggling in order to eat one of those uh, sure. beets because sure. I need a dose now. <laughs> I succeeded so hard in my juggling that I had to eat one. You, I like <laughs> to think you you did that as you're juggling. You're like eating oh, one yeah. of them. There you go. Oh yeah, just pop one of them in my mouth. So as a uh, beef, your new bee friend uh, is leading you to the northeast. Uh, he tells you the the story of the Tree of Honey, uh, which is not a very long story because it's not a very long walk. Uh, but he tells you that the legend is that there was a great bear once who knew that if you put haycorns in the ground that it grew trees. Uh, and so he thought what he wanted more than anything was honey. And if he put some honeycomb in the ground, it would grow a tree that was made of honey and that would make honey. And of course, everyone told him he was a silly old bear. But the magic of the Hundred Acre Woods is such that it took some time, but little by little, this tree of honey grew in the forest. Uh, And the queen came to be, and the hive is at the top. And they help make honey for the woods. He seems very proud of this story. I met that bear. Uh, He he stops dead in his tracks, and he goes, He's my friend. You've met the great yeah. who? He's very smart. <laughs> what was very he like? Smart. He, <laughs> seemed, he starts asking you all he these questions. He knew all the things. Uh, he's a great speller. Um, uh, and he was sad because there was uh, no honey. We're all sad because there's no honey, but it just... Also, he said be. he was my best friend. Um, wow. Yeah. And he said I was a... <laughs> Alistair just makes uh, skeptical noises. Throughout. And I said I was a great bear. Gran just grumbles. I'm just groaning and... Okay, let's go. Let's go. This is like prime conversation that none of you want to be part of except for Scraps and your new friend. Probably Gran falls asleep at some point, but you know, it's just like snoring softly. Uh, so as you proceed further to the northeast, you find uh, a... The creek that you sort of have come in contact with, the river, um, grows a bit wider up here, and there is uh, some some semblance of a bridge. Uh, And at one point, you come across a stick that is stuck in the ground, and there is a plaque near it uh, that just says, The North Pole, discovered by Pooh. Hey, you're from here. There's a stick in the ground. This is where you're from. Is your house around here? No, no. Nope, I'm from the other North Pole. South. The further the North Pole. Further, <laughs> the further north of the North Poles. While, while we're talking, Scraps uh, picks the stick up, like just not even thinking about it, but is like holding it. Out <laughs> yeah. of the ground. It's holding it. It's like, uh, here's your stick. If you, you know, just like, I wouldn't drop it or anything. But if you did, I'd get it for you. I... I take it out of his mouth and put it back in the ground because you know oh. who put it there oh well, you wouldn't want to ruin that now would you oh yeah he's my best friend mm-hmm. uh so at the at the point of the north pole uh beef tells you that the the triumvirate they they have a hideout further in this direction um and uh he doesn't he hasn't been close himself but he can smell honey and the rest of you can begin to smell honey and not just a little bit of honey like a lot of honey like the biggest cache of honey you've probably ever smelled in any one given time or place um uh 
and you see another grove of trees ahead of you. You can't, it's a very thick grove of trees, like thicker even than the center of the forest that you pass through. Um, and these are tall trees with wide canopies and it, it seems a bit darker. The sunlight doesn't come through here very well. So it has a little bit of a vibe, but, but a, a kind of eerie or creepy vibe. Um, but you definitely smell lots and lots of honey. Alistair, Alistair, do you want to climb up the tree and see if we can get a bird's eye view of the the situation so we can find a, the best way in? You mean a fox's eye view? Yeah, that. Be sensitive, please. Fair. <laughs> climb up the tree. Be sensitive. Or I will attempt to climb up the tree. Let's see. Uh, yeah, go ahead and, and roll for climb. That would be bear advantage. After Alistair <laughs> leaves. Uh, ah. I failed to climb. <laughs> Scraps looks at Gran and goes, you know, Alistair's a fox, not a bird. Uh, I, I, yes. Mm. Just. Uh. You don't get me, <laughs> honey. If you want me, honey, you don't get me. Huh? <gasps> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> wow. Uh, Alistair, you head to the first tree in this sort of grove that you encounter, and you attempt to scurry up it. Uh, and you're not really sure why, but you can't seem to... You're, you're sort of scrabbling. Um, most trees, you, you see, you know, there'd be some low branches. There'd be some some sort of trunk that you could get your, your claws into. Um, what you find here is these trees are surprisingly, like, lacking in bark at the, the bottom like 10 15 feet or so 10 or 12 feet um so you can't get a grip on anything to get up into the tree so you're just kind of like sliding back down um <laughs> and it for a couple minutes and then stop um and once i'm and then i will come over to the rest like trees broke so can, can oh. i like lift alistair up and like just kind of reach up as high as i can see if i bark at the tree too enough? I bark at the tree. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Yay! I knew I'd get somebody to join oh, me eventually no. in my pun filled world. Um yes, Nook, you are pretty large. You can you can lift Alistair up towards maybe a branch or something. And like I said, these these trees, all of these trees around here seem to be bare like this. <laughs> um for the, the bottom ten or twelve feet. Um it's not consistent so it almost looks like it all the bark's been rubbed off by something you're not quite sure what what that might be but there's definitely bark higher up and there are branches higher up so you can you can lift you can lift alistair up into the tree do i need to roll the climb again once i'm up uh no i think i think once you get to the point where you can get a hold on something you're you're in good shape okay what do i see you may have to figure out how you're going to get back down too but <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you climb up these trees, uh, like I said, this is, it's not a huge grove, but it is pretty dark, uh, and you see a lot of these trees in sort of a more or less circle shape, and there are several trees deep in this, in this sort of circle. Um, as you, you can kind of see through them, uh, and you do see something in the, the center that, uh, you might describe as a tree house, but it is on the ground, but it's just, it looks like it would have come from a tree. Maybe it fell out of a tree. You're not quite sure. Um, but it looks like a little, uh, well, it's actually not little. It's a fairly decent sized shack uh, in the middle of this grove. Um, and as you, if you keep an eye out for a few minutes, uh, you definitely hear some strange noises in this grove. They're not the sort of lighter, more cheerful noises of the 100 acre wood uh, or even the high beaches where you come from. Uh, you hear growls or um, strange little whistling noises and things like that. Uh, and you occasionally see maybe some movement, but you can't get a good look at anything from where you are because there's a lot of lot of foliage in your way. Right. I'm going to start to come down, and then I'm going to, uh, once I reach like the bottom most branch, I'm going to yell down, Nook, lie down! <laughs> oh no. Nook complies, but after taking Gran gently off of my back. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna try I, jumping, jumping down onto the soft fur of I feel Nook. like I should make Nook roll for muscle like you're gonna tense yourself and catch this fox. I don't know. Don't tense In up. front of you, uh, like, <laughs> Scraps, like, crouches down, like, play fighting, like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> 
Okay. Grand gets a stick and throws it. Goes and gets it. Thanks, <laughs> Grand. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Jump onto you. Yeah. Alistair's not very big. This is not a. This is not a concern. You make a good, good uh, emergency landing pad <laughs> and give a good bear hug. Yes. Oh. Oh, oh excellent. <laughs> He will accept the hug and then, like, get off of you and kind of brush himself off and look like he's <laughs> Yeah. Uh, y'all are friends. Yeah. Good. <laughs> oh, shut up. Go away. Anyway, <laughs> that's, we've got ourselves a ground house. It's a house that looks like it should be a tree house, but it's not. Mm. It's on the ground. So it's a ground mm-hmm. house. It's pretty big. It's that way. Complicated. It, uh, multiple entrances. Do we have just the one? Uh, <laughs> Alistair only saw one side of it, so you don't know. Got to do I some saw more. one. Mm. All right. oh. You did, in fact, the the side you happened to see uh, did have a, a large set of of double doors, almost like you might see on a barn. Mm. I think I, I will relay that. I think I might know who lives in that house. Our new friends. Let's go. <laughs> oh no! Okay. <laughs> uh, climbs back up on the back <laughs> of. Um, <laughs> Just so there, there is a semblance of a trail through this this tight grove of trees, um, and in fact, it looks like it maybe started as a single like a deer trail or something, but it has been widened by uh, seemingly some sort of creatures forcing their way through repeatedly. So some of the trees seem to bend outward a little bit, or sort of buckle in, or dent, or crack a little bit. So something has widened. Uh, this path. So there is an obvious path in. Uh, you are some, well, you're different sizes of animals, so uh, you can take this path. You can look for alternatives. Um, this this grove is big, but it's not huge, so you could certainly explore around it if you want before diving headlong in, but Scraps may have just run straight in there. No, there's nobody stopping friends. me. I'm going to go get some new <laughs> friends. <laughs> Does anyone want to try sneaking at all? Like one can. <laughs> Sneaking. I mean, if you if you want if you want me to, to sneak up close and take a look, I can do that. Yeah, if you could, if, even if we have some people furtive look at scraps, taking the more direct route, maybe some of us should just you know go ground ground the side. Yeah, yeah, go into hiding. Yeah, 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 yeah I can do that. <laughs> Uh, so scraps as you run ahead this conversation is happening behind you but you have already run down this path and, and taken a, a headed for this shack that you're a good tails, friend Alistair. tails a wagon <laughs> tail a wagon <laughs> gonna go meet my um, new best friends uh, your your new bee friend Beef, who was previously riding on your head, has long since abandoned you wants no part of whatever rash action you That's are fair. taking <laughs> Uh, as you come into this clearing, you see very much like Alistair told you, a large building um, that has a big set of double doors at the side that you arrive on it. Um, there do appear to be some small, sort of very simple windows, um, but that's the front side of the building that you are approaching. Okay, I'm gonna go up and put my paws up on the windowsill and look inside and go, "Who are my friends?" Okay. <laughs> Where are my friends at? <laughs> Uh, as you plunge into the, the sort of opening of the grove, you hear a sort of growling sound from up behind you in Brand? a tree. Who is it? Um, it doesn't answer you. It doesn't get any closer. You just hear this growling for a moment, and then it, it stops. And as you are... I can't oh, see you, friend. <laughs> uh, when you say that, there's, done, there's just a growl again. And then it stops. Are you gonna? We gonna play? We're gonna play dog. <laughs> it's a game us bears play, <laughs> where we act like dogs. Uh, <laughs> it does not. Whatever it is out there does not seem to want to play dog or bear. Hmm. <laughs> uh, if you look in the window, mm-hmm. you see uh, a couple of different things. It's a it's a large open room. Um, there does appear to be a big table, uh, kind of towards the front center of the space, and then towards the back, almost like. Um, what you would call like stalls or something for large and consider stalls for large animals and you do see some things moving around there uh you see a creature that is bigger than your friend mm-hmm. nook um it does move on all fours but it has a very um 
as a as a as a player, it has a very like mammoth feel to it. But I don't know how to describe that to Scraps because Scraps would not have any mm-hmm. comparison. For so it's it. a, so you're <laughs> saying it's a bear. <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying it's a bear exactly. Um, it is a strange looking mm-hmm. bear um, because its legs are longer and it's it's uh, it seems to have some uh, things coming out of its face. Mm-hmm. Weird Pointy bear things. Um, there is at least one of those. You, you can't see all the way to the back of this building. Um, but it definitely, uh, has big round feet. So you, you've seen a heffalump before this. You're, well, you thought you'd seen a heffalump before. So this is clearly not a heffalump mm-hmm. because you've scared a heffalump yeah, away. It. Real good. Or, yeah. Uh, so you're not sure what, y- you've been told by your new friends in the Hundred Acre Wood that there are uh, heffalumps, woodsels, and jaguars mm-hmm. up here. Um, so you're not quite sure what this mm-hmm. might be. Uh, and across from it, and they seem to be conversing, but you're not, you, you can't hear anything through through the walls where you're at. Uh, you see another creature that uh, has large back feet, small front feet, and it seems to be up on its back feet. Um, and uh, it is, they're, they're talking about something. They might even be arguing. They seemed at one point their voices get a little louder, but you can't make it out. Um, and uh, it has a mouthful of teeth. They look like sharp, sharp and pointy teeth. So obviously another yeah. bear. Um. <laughs> another bear with another weird yep. bear. This room's full yeah. of weird bears. Um, but the, the bear with the things coming out of its face is purple. Hmm. Strange color for a bear. Strange, strange Most bears I've met are white. I'm not sure about that. Uh, and the the thing, the other thing that you see that has big back feet and small front teeth, a lot of teeth, um, is uh, orange with white polka dots. Orange with white polka dots. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what you currently see inside. Just go, man. Those some weird bears. I'm gonna go tell Nook. <laughs> uh, so the rest of you who did not go plunging madly into the woods. Um, what were you planning to do? Or what would you like to do? I have been given permission to hide, <laughs> which delights me. Okay. Um, so I'm going to attempt to be surreptitious and, and take a slightly different path from everyone else. You know, hide, d- d- disappear in the shadows. Okay. I am trying to be, yeah. I think grand. And do you plan to sneak around the building or in this um, grove? Yeah. Sure. So there's basically several layers of trees and then probably about a 10 or 15 foot gap, depending on which side of the building you're on between where the trees end and where the building starts. So there's always an open space that you would have to cross. Mm-hmm. Um, In that case, but, I'm going to get to kind of the edge of the clearing mm-hmm. and like keep an eye out for things, but not expose myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and roll for uh, thief because you're going to be sneaky. Okay, so you are uh, very sneaky. Um, you think you hear something rustling in the trees above you, but it doesn't seem to note. As far as you know, it has not noticed you. Um, if you look up, you do see a figure of some sort. You can't make out a lot of details because it's dark colored and it seems to blend into the, the dark treetops that are around it. Um, but there's some sort of creature that also appears to be on the lookout above you. Um, but yeah, you are stealthily in the inside line of the trees around this building. So you can do where, you can go where you would like to go within that tree, tree line. (laughs) Cool. I'm going to stay put and just watch what happens for a bit. Okay, so as you were getting into place then, you would have seen Scraps, uh, running up to this window, uh, potentially yelling up at a tree. (laughs) Which actually is A, what Scraps would do, and B, makes sense because you've heard something rustling up there and you may have heard some of this growling. Uh, And and C, Scraps, I guess, spend a few moments at this window, nose pressed up to it, and then come running back out. (laughs) Out of the woods. That makes sense. And I think Grant uh, would have been like, I think we probably should just wait here. One of them will come back and give us the info. And if we hear anything, we can go running and and guns blazing, you know. So Nook just kind of poises... In case we need to run. Yeah. <laughs> I was not informed of this is GM. Wait a minute. Bears blazing. Claws blazing. Bears blazing. There you go. 
Okay, What's well, a gun? I'm blazed up. I'm ready to get blazed up. <laughs> no, it's just assumed that every Grant Howitt game is going to have a gun. <laughs> come, come running back. Look, okay. there's bears up there. They're weird looking, though. Not like us. All right, start start from the beginning. What, what do they so, look like? So I was walking through the woods, I was looking for my new friends, and a new friend started growling at me. And I was like, hey, friend, we can't be friends unless I can see you. And he just growled. And so I said, well, I'm going to go look inside this window and see where my new friends are at. And I looked inside, and there was a friend that was orange, and it had polka dots, and I, there was another friend that was purple. And they're both bears, and they're both weird. They don't look like us. Grant, is he just seeing things? Mm, uh, I don't think. I'm I was sure. seeing things. I looked. I used my eyes. I saw them, and then I came back here, and I was like, I want to tell my other bear friend about the bears I met. I think I think we're going to be friends. I am concerned that we aren't I, that we aren't going to be friends. I, I am concerned. That is I, actually my I, true I, concern. I worry about these... that a lot more than you would think. That things aren't going to be friends with me. I, I think. Uh, you are underestimating how much I think you want to just be friends with people. Um, but I think these creatures are not necessarily friendly. We don't know yet, but we should be careful. If they're not friendly, I'll bark at them. Problem so. solved. I don't see how that solves any. Anyway, um, uh, Alistair's not back, so I assume you know he's just waiting for us to maybe make a move. Um, Alistair's making friends without me. No, no, not at all. Alistair's, uh, do it. Alistair's on a secret mission. To make friends? Not, it's not a friend-making mission, so Ooh, what you is don't it? want his mission. His mission's, uh, he, you know, no. not, a, not as interesting to you. Okay. Is it climbing yeah. again? Yes. I'm not a good climber. I just cool. start ambling forward kind of slowly, yeah, trying just... to, like... Yeah, okay, just... let me just move forward slowly, cautiously, a little lower to the ground. Careful of the keeping, friend in the tree. Keeping an eye and an ear out. There's friends in the trees. Gran, look up. That's Keep true. an eye. There is friends in the trees. So are you, uh, Nook, are you making your way through the through the trees towards the building? Is that your plan? Or Yes, but slowly and wondering if Scraps can smell anything odd. If Scraps can smell anything, are you asking Scraps? I am asking Scraps, scraps to, to, because I know he's okay. a dog, and maybe that will be useful. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, so Scraps, uh, go ahead and... Roll for dog? Roll for <laughs> bear. bear uh. Yeah, this is, not what, this is not your skill, and this is nope. not your role, though, so just a straight hey, bear I roll. Did. Hey, I did it. Nice. Um, I mean... It's hard to define what might stel- smell strange. You definitely smell honey. Sunny. You you smell your friend Nook, who's right next mm-hmm. to you. So you're like, mm, that's there's bear smell. But smell the more you think about it, bear smell. yeah. But then you think about uh, a whiff that you maybe got when you were closer to that mm-hmm. building of those creatures that you saw that maybe maybe didn't smell like bears. Mm-hmm. What if they weren't bears? Could they have not they been may bears? Have, they may be some new form of bear that I've never smelled before. Because it definitely wasn't a heffalump. No, nah, I barked at one of those. Mm-mm. I would know. Mm-hmm. I remember things I bark at. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so that that's what Scraps is... So, I don't know how Scraps is telling you whether... No, someday <laughs> let me tell you about my top ten things I barked at. Uh-huh. So what what did they smell like? Did they smell like me or you? No. No? You sure they're bear? Bears? Berry? Yeah. Uh, m- maybe. I haven't I seen any pictures of bears that look like this. I think we might have to go talk to them. Um, let yeah. Let me see. I think because we... S- starts the, walking our away. Our goal isn't just to <laughs> steal the, go- the honey... We gotta get, gotta get them to leave and not to what they're doing. So, uh, I will contact. Uh, I'll see if I can. Mm, I, I, Alistair still has the element of surprise available to us. So, 
Uh, we could assume that you have some sort of signal, some sort of sound, some sort of possum noise you might make that would alert Alistair. Yeah, that they need to come come to us. Um, yeah. Just a loud hissing. What, yeah, I don't know what that possum noise is and how. <laughs> yeah, probably some loud hissing would be, and probably like a specific hiss, like Morse code kind of thing. Um, for like, come over here or stay put. Do we want? Do we think Alistair should come? I think you know, he might be useful. You said you said Alistair was on a secret mission. All right, we'll leave it for now. We'll start the conversation. If I, you you all know the signal, we'll we'll get there. All what's right. the What's the signal? No, I'm not going to tell you. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I just start moving forward. So you just, did you did not make us you did not make a, a strange possible. I did not. We'll leave Alistair okay. like watching from outside, so that way, if we get in Got a it. real bad scuff, you know, I can just make the noise. I just start moving forward. Again, yeah, slowly, prone, you know. Okay, so three of you are uh, approaching the uh, this treehouse on the ground, uh, all in very different ways. <laughs> no, kind of doing the the, the ground crawl. Uh, Scraps, I'm sure, running circles around Nook and uh, Gran on the and, back. Uh, Gran just sort of, you know, owning it. Gun, I feel like she might have her stick, a bear and she's like, a stick no, out. maybe yep. she's like hitting it into her hand slowly Ooh, okay. as they're coming up. Like Scraps you know. is watching you, like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I'll keep Someone's Scraps with us. It. What are you? What are you? Uh, what are you gonna do with that? Don't worry about it. I'm I'm deeply worried about it. <laughs> Uh, so, Alistair, you don't know what your crew is doing, but they do seem to be walking past you uh, into into the clearing uh, and and towards the building, I guess. You all tell me. Yeah, let's go. Let's <laughs> Where go ahead and, like, kick the double doors in. Let's, you know. All right, I walk up and kick the double doors in. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll for muscle. As, as soon as the k- kicks the doors in, <laughs> Scraps goes, Hi, new friends! <laughs> Uh, I, I am, I'm, on the one hand, I'm glad you succeeded. On the other hand, as a GM, I was really hoping you were <laughs> slam into the door. Done. <laughs> Grand falls off. No. Yeah, so, uh, you're pretty sure that these doors were supposed to open outward, but you hit them with your polar bear might, and, like, they just crack inward. They're not super strong doors, but they crack inward. Uh, and the two creatures that your friend Scraps described to you, uh, that you can see across this large open space, sort of towards the back, both of their heads snap in your direction. And surprisingly, Scraps gave you an accurate description. I mean, they're definitely not bears, but this is an accurate description. Of I mean, Scraps we'll see. <laughs> and and when you create this very loud noise of breaking these doors in, um, as I said, these you you are just seeing this for the first time. The second half of this room is sort of designed as stalls, so you see um, three more heads pop up from that were clearly like ducked down, not like hiding from you, but for whatever reason were were on all fours. Um, you see two more of these orange polka dotted creatures with lots of teeth and sm- small front arms. Um, their heads pop up into view, and they all look in your direction. Hi, new friends. Uh, there's a moment where the large purple creature um, looks out at you and sort of sniffs the air and goes not friends we don't need more friends yes you do everyone needs more friends I'm a bear Mm. this is my friend Nook who's also a bear and this is Gran who is not a bear but is still great (laughs) Uh, this large purplish creature says, um, Heffalumps don't need friends. We need everybody out of these woods. We're taking over. But then who would be your friends if everybody left? I'm, I'm confused uh, by the, your logic. I don't understand. The creature looks away from Scraps and is like, not sure that it's going to make a point that Scraps <laughs> will understand. Listen, listen. Why? Why do you need everyone out the woods? We we want to be in these woods to g- gather some honey. I've we've heard that we've just heard that there's been some. Wh- why? 
What's your purpose here? We're taking over this joint. There's a lot of good stuff out here, but we don't need these other animals. We don't need this honey. It's Have you seen how sticky this stuff is? It's great. It's like, the best. Mel over here got it on his paws and was tracking it everywhere. You know. The sooner we get everybody out, we can get rid of that tree. We can turn this place into the mud pit of our dreams. Like acres of mud pit. Have you seen this place when it rains hard? Floods everywhere. I do like mud. <laughs> this is how Scraps turns on the party. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Good argument. <laughs> no. No, that's an awful idea. Woods are nice when they're dry, when you can rustle through the leaves, when, you know, the sticks snap off easily. Huh, Scraps? Oh, yeah. I also like rolling in mud, though. You do this, like you get on your back and you just do like this. It's nice. But, but Scraps, don't you like swimming like a bear? I do. Yeah. Yep. I do like that, too. Uh, the the large creature, the purple one, looks you over and says, I don't know who you think you are coming in here, but you should head back what, out here. What, what gives, like, what, what can we do to convince you to not take over the woods? What do you know about some, like, magic mud pit somewhere? Because otherwise we're taking this place over. There was that mud pit. I don't know if it was magical, but there was a mud pit. He sort of looks back and scraps his direction. Yeah, we, I, I was, so I was doing my best bear paddle, and we came out in a mud pit. <laughs> it's like a bog, mud pit, it's muddy. Scrap selling out Eeyore, is that what's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> Scraps doesn't understand that they can't just hang out together. <laughs> if you like mud, there's mud. Uh, I don't know. Seems like y'all are trying to foil our, you come mm -hmm. here. Find yes. our hideout. Probably trying to steal that yes. honey. Nobody else has had the courage to yep. do that yet. Yeah, but, we're uh, do that. And he looks over at one of the polka dotted creatures who sort of uh, pats some some jars that you can see poking up over one of the stalls, sort of pats them and goes, We've got these under okay. control. The longer we hide them, the, long, the less time it'll take for people to get out of these woods. Speaking of uh, stealing, yes. Yeah. Um, while this is happening, we left Alistair. Yes, yeah. Alistair is going to, um, having watched everyone go inside, um, he's going to try and sneak around the edge of the tree line to where the the other side of the shack is, the back end that we mm -hmm. haven't seen yet. Um, partially to see what's up, partially to get away from what he suspects is the jaguar in the trees. Mm -hmm. um, so he's just going to sneak around to like the opposite, the opposite side from where he is. Okay, see as, can see. as you get to the back side of this building, uh, you see a much smaller door than, than on the front side. It's, you don't think, you haven't seen these creatures yet, you, that you, that somehow maybe are in here. You kind of hear the sound of your friends who have stomped their way in talking to something. Um, there, it's definitely not as big as the, the double doors at the front. So if those double doors are there because something big has to come in and out of them, it can't use this door. But you don't know what's in there, so you're not sure if this door has a, a functional purpose or if it's just on this shack that these creatures have taken over. Uh, but there is, in fact, a door back there. Um, am I, now that I've circled around to the other side, can I, do I feel like if I tried to sneak over to the door, the shack itself would block the view of the the maybe jaguar that's in the trees as far as you know you don't know how many you don't know if there's more jaguars or what the the situation is but if you want to make an attempt to sneak 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 to the building you can certainly do that i i would indeed like to do that okay so that's since i'm sneaking i assume it's my thief yes skills ah success, success. so and as i'm sneaking I very sneakily eat my last uh, last dose of honey. <laughs> yeah, okay. eat my last beat that I've been holding on to. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you you sneak 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 towards this building. Um, you actually, as you do so, instead you you heard a growl before, uh, and and this time you hear a chuckle come from the trees up behind you, and a, a voice that says, "I'm not going to take on anybody that sneaky." And you hear something 
retreat back into the trees. It doesn't, it seems to be impressed by your skill <laughs> and, and is not going to try and take you out. <laughs> Maybe you've accidentally made a Jaguar friend. New friends! <laughs> Scraps would be really excited. That wasn't, that wasn't even, your part. That wasn't even my mission. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, there is this door. Uh, there is, um, there is not a window on the back side here so if you you have successfully snuck up to the building so you could potentially crack that door if you want to see or and or hear what's going on inside but there are okay. no windows on the side of the building okay huh well that seems dangerous there's no is there a crack at the bottom that i yeah. can peek through to see yeah, if there's is, any like feet yeah as you've gotten closer to this building it's definitely not level in any way like you your first impression that this used to be a tree house that somehow ended up on the ground is your correct impression so it's not it's not really level it's a little broken up so you can definitely get down to the ground and sort of put your ear to that yeah, crack Okay, but I can't see through it or anything. You can't really see through it. You you can look through. Um, basically, from here, all you would see would be an open floor space between what you what seem to be some partitioned off spaces. Um, sticking out of one of them, you see two big round feet uh, that seem to have made those tracks you saw way back by the pine trees, if you had to guess. Uh, and then further in the room, you see the feet of of scraps and nook okay so it's an open space it's um, a largely it's, open space yeah i'm gonna s stay hunkered down where i am for now and just continue to try to listen for outside uh yeah so so far you're hearing uh maybe scraps being won over something about a mud pit uh <laughs> grand trying to figure out what what it will take to get rid of these uh creatures that you you're not sure what they are because you've been told there's heffalumps and wootzels, but that doesn't seem like any heffalump you know of. <laughs> it's a wrong heffalump. Yeah. But yeah, so I'll just be I'll just be listening from the other side. <laughs> the wrong heffalumps, the exactly. Yeah. Like okay. you don't even you don't even want the stuff here. Like why would you want to make your mud pit here and rather that there's better mud elsewhere? There's better mud elsewhere? He says, well, there's more mud elsewhere. There's not a lot of mud here. Where? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of mud here. That's why we're going to make more mud. You can just go some... Wait, what do you mean, elsewhere? Down, Down by, by the, the river. river. <laughs> like, I said that in unison. Uh, yeah, yeah, the other side of the forest, yeah. I thought, I mean, this is, like, this is, this is where we... This is the only place we know. He seems confused. Like, what do you mean other places? So there's this place called Florida. <laughs> it's got a lot of mud. Florida? Uh, he says that he... <laughs> Did Scraps actually say that? No. I was... okay. Listen, I've got a brochure for my retirement package I can give you on Florida. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> You can even get a discount if you tell them I refer you. Yeah. It's the whole thing. No. Uh, this is how Grand sells some um, heffalumps and wootzels on a pyramid yeah. scheme. <laughs> um, yeah, so they seem confused at the concept that there is anything beyond the 100 acre wood, mm -hmm. if that's what you're implying. Mm -hmm. There is, though. There is a bunch yeah, really? we, we all came from somewhere beyond here. Most of us, we've never been here before. Mm -hmm. North. I came from north. <laughs> the, some call it the frozen north. Where's he pulling this from? Frozen. Okay, yep. We're, frozen. Yes, we are not all from here. We definitely passed through some boggy areas elsewhere, but not too far. Yeah, you'd still be in, like, you know, you'd be able to write your grandparents and to go home once in a while. What are, what are grandparents? Never mind. Oh, old, old friends. <laughs> old friends. Uh, you, the, the purple creature looks at the, the, the three other sort of polka dotted creatures who have not spoken to you in any tangible way at this point. You're not sure what they're, if they can speak any sort of language there's a lot of chompy teeth maybe it gets in the way <laughs> you don't know. uh and they seem to be gesturing to each other communicating somehow and um and the mammoth is looking at you going i don't know i don't know he says look half lumps start here in the hundred acre wood 
We don't really know any other place. Our job is to just kind of harass everybody that's here. We just thought maybe we could be in charge for once. And the Wootzels were in on it. The Jaguars, I mean, they're out there, but we don't entirely trust them either. The bees, the well, those weird, the wrong bees. I think somebody calls them the wrong bees. They were easy to suck her in. But you're not get, you all you get is... You're, you're having to do so much work, and it just seems like way too oh, much. yeah, it's a lot of work. You, it's been a lot of work. You, We've spent months stealing honey from people. Why don't you just go, to, you just have to go out the forest a little bit, like just across the river, and it, you're just, not even across the river, just like a little bit nearer to the river, and you're right there with mud. I mean, like, mud bridge that's over there? And you passed a bridge over the river on your way to the North Pole and beyond. Well, past the North Pole before you got here. There were some, there was a yeah, bridge. Yeah, wasn't there two the river Pole. bits and like one had a bridge and one didn't? Yeah, yeah. Near the North Pole, there's an actual bridge that that leaves essentially what what you would consider the boundaries of the Hundred oh, Acre. Oh, okay. Um, and so he says, you mean over over the bridge? Yes, it is. It is over the bridge. We've, we've never, he looks at the other creatures games, we've never tried over the bridge. At, at this point... <laughs> The back door opens. Okay. Um, Alistair has been gathering his courage. Um, and he saunters in and goes, Ads, you're working on a faulty premise. You think all heffalumps are here? I'm here to tell you different. I seen heffalumps. I seen heffalumps way far away. You're missing out. They're better heffalumps, too. They're the happier. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Up. Better than us? Mm. I don't know about that. I mean, there's yeah. me and there's my brother. He's out, you know, doing some stuff in the woods. He'll be back soon enough. Uh, I don't know about being better than us. But no, 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 it no, no, could no. maybe hurt to meet some others. Um, I'm going to have Gran and Alistair both roll. Um, both roll for your roles. We're going to do Brains and Thief, so I'll give you advantage on both, because you're essentially trying to con these creatures into... Leaving. It's sort of partially intimidation, partially uh, hey, wouldn't you rather be in this muddier place? <laughs> so, feels like a weird little scheme, but it seems to be working. All so right. <laughs> We both succeeded. Alright. So, uh, this heffalump looks at you and he says, just you think we'll be okay if we go over the bridge? He looks real uncertain. He almost seems nervous now, and he's like, because that, that's like a whole other mm-hmm. place. That's... Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Like, we've been there. We didn't... Nothing bad happened to us. I have we lots there. of friends there. Uh, and, yeah, we got friends, those heffalumps. Uh, to just tell them I sent you. They'll be real happy to hear about it. <laughs> uh, and some sort of communication passes again between the, the heffalump and the three wootzels who are here. And you see head sort of nodding um and they say all right sounds like a plan i can't guarantee we won't come back if we don't like it but i also can't tell you if we can do anything about those jaguars they uh they're a little scary even for me (laughs) so we'll go if you show us how to get to the bridge walk us there he all of a sudden seems like he wants someone he's like Grand made a really good argument, but now he kind of wants Grand to hold his hand again. I'll go with you. <laughs> He'll go with you. I mean, you seem you seem kind of yeah. nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, so they will agree to go, and about this time you hear uh, something, Alistair, crashing through the underbrush, because uh, heffalumps are not subtle. Uh, and it is, uh, the looks the same as the one that's in there, except he's like a teal color instead of purple. Um kind of crashes through the brush and around the front of the building and through the now smashed in front doors thanks to Nook. Uh, <laughs> and starts to hey what, what what's going on here? Hi new friend. Uh, and as soon as he says <laughs> that Scrap says hey new friend uh, looks at the others and says who are these who are these people? Who are these these are these animals? We're friends. Uh, and his his brother, the one you've been talking to, tells him uh, begins to explain the situation. And apparently, there might be some other heffalumps. Maybe they're going to go investigate. Doesn't mean they can't come back. Uh, but essentially, uh, 
convinces his brother that the five of them, the two heffalumps and the three woozles, who have, as far as you know, they don't admit to anyone else, uh, claim to have done this on their own with the help of those weird bees they made. I uh, don't know what their deal is at this point, but you guys seem to have control over things. You can probably handle them. Uh, and the two jaguars in the woods, they can't help you with those. You're going to have to sort that out on your own. But uh, they uh, they each, the, the three Wootzels each take a single jar of honey. You're not really sure if they eat this or if they're just taking it for weird reasons. Um, but at this point, Alistair, given your angle, you see that the back four stalls are just full of jars of honey. Uh, so this is the giant stash of stuff that they've been hoarding and stealing and hiding away up here. Uh, especially if Scraps is willing to lead them back to the, the bridge uh, just beyond this grove and uh, escort them over it because they seem a little nervous about that mm -hmm. water. What happens if they fall in? Uh, Bear paddle. You have you can convince the uh, heffalumps and wootzels to to at least go uh, explore some other. As forests. we're as we're walking, I'm talking to them. So if you ever fall in water, you gotta do it like this. You gotta Alternatively, do it like this. the wootzels, I will save you. the wootzels, <laughs> the wootzels look really sad about this because they go like Aww. this, but essentially they have tiny T-Rex arms and they're I like, go, "It's okay, friend. It'll work." Alternatively, I will jump in and, and grab you, so it'll be all right. Well, now, but what if there's other, there's other woods? Just do this. Other water. They're, so they're all, the, the Wootzels are walking on their back legs, and they're all practicing this motion as you go. Like, they're just... Are we all going together? This one. Uh, that's up to you. Apparently, Scraps and Nook are escorting them to the bridge, which is not far. You passed it on your way here, so you don't Alistair all have to go. That's up to is you. not going anywhere with the Heffalumps. <laughs> okay. He, he, he put on a good face uh, when he was doing his little con, but his tail was, like, <laughs> puffed up <laughs> the whole time. He <laughs> breathes, like, an audible sigh of relief yes. as soon as the Heffalumps are just out of his sight line, because these are different Heffalumps. They are they different confessed Heffalumps. confessed to being Heffalumps. I think, mm -hmm. I think Rand would stay with the big stash of honey the as everybody leaves it. and immediately starts, like, putting as much as can fit into her little, like, marsupial okay. sack. She'll just try to get as many as she can. In uh, fact, Alistair is going to eat another well, some of the right honey. ahead. There is plenty I of think honey. Grand will too, just to just to even things out. Um, so as you're doing this, uh, Alistair, your sort of uh, thief-like ears hear the sound of something, um, probably something large, jumping out of a tree and landing on the ground out behind the back doors, mm -hmm. and uh, something, uh, a sort of panther-like face. Um, but it is, uh, it is dark gray, uh, with bright gold eyes. So very panther-like, uh, at least the head that you see, just a head pokes in the door. Um, and as soon as it pokes into the door of the shack, which has a little bit of light in it, um, the, the dark gray fur turns sort of, uh, brownish gold to match the door behind it. So very camouflage effect. Um looks at you specifically and says, and you hear that sort of chuckle again and says, did you, did you convince him to go? Yeah, yeah, we sure did. <sighs> and I don't know how we got him working for those guys, but they did not know what they were doing. I think we're going to head out. <laughs> <laughs> this was the wrong job for us. We're going to go find some better work. Uh, and he sort of nods his head at you, and as he backs out, you see the fur turn back to gray, and it blends into the dark, uh, and you hear the sound of three different large cat-like creatures uh, disappear off into the woods, uh, far, far, much further to the north. They are not headed back towards the Hundred Acre Wood at all. As soon as they're gone, I will turn to Gran and go, look, when the others get back, we tell them we we had to do a whole con on yeah, those guys. We... we had to convince them. It was real tough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Grin, as you are, because uh, we are we are over time, and I want to get us to the end of our story. You're close, but not quite there. Uh, as you are rattling through all these jars, because I'm sure you're taking a personal inventory of what you can stuff in your pouch, uh, how much you might be able to convince uh, Scraps and Nook to carry. Um, you do see, a, rather than a clay jar full of honey. Uh, you see something that looks more like one of the glass jars that you uh, that Alistair managed to snag from Pooh's house, uh, and in it, uh, it's not it is honey, but at the center of that honey, you see a piece of honeycomb 
that seems to almost sparkle a little bit. Like it's, it's almost glittery or gold. Uh, well, it's gold anyway, but it seems to be a little bit glittery. And as you're looking at this, uh, you hear a buzzing sound and Beef comes buzzing in through the open back door. And he goes, oh, you found it. You found it. She's going to be so happy. This is going to fix everything. Tree's going to be good again. We can fix everything. You are the best. And he's buzzing ha around happily. Great. Well, I didn't want to tell you about it before because I wasn't sure if you guys were like on the level, but you were helping out and now you found it. That's how we fix the tree. Uh. <laughs> uh, and probably about this time, uh, Scraps and Nook, if you are returning to the shack to meet up with your colleagues and friends, uh, you would be arriving back at this point. Well, if it, if it ensures production of continuous honey, I suppose that's a net gain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he goes, well, obviously I can't carry it, but if you can help me bring that back to the tree, it's going to be awesome. You said we get a cut, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're, there's definitely a war reward in this for you. I just can't carry that. Can it's I? Got Tiny little bee legs. What's going on? Hey, that's our bee friend. So is there any like okay. rope or like sack or something that we can like tie on to me? So I can carry um, quite a bit. There is, there are definitely some sacks. You figure that must be a couple of sacks. You figure that must be how the half a lumps and woodsels got the honey. Uh, there are, all, are also some tins of sweetened condensed milk. You also find some cans uh, hidden among the jars. Um, you don't know that you could carry all of it in one trip because they obviously have been stealing for months and uh, secreting things away. Uh, but you could bring a decent amount. You could carry a, a decent amount and maybe even if Scraps wanted to uh, to carry some sacks. Like a, like like a sled a, dog. Like a I was sled dog. Say, yeah. or, a, or a sled yeah. bear. Uh, you could definitely, the two of you could definitely bring some of this back and you can at least tell the people in the hundred, the, your friends, new friends in the hundred acre woods, um, what, what is going on and, and how they can find things. Scrap can I sneak a little taste away. of the fancy honey? <clears throat> you can. Scraps eat some honey. Uh, go ahead and I'm going to make you roll for it though, because this bee is real excited and he's keeping an eye oh, on Oh no. Um, let's see. Just go ahead and roll for bear. Just a straight bear okay. roll. Nice. Success. Oh, that is that is a hard <laughs> success. Uh, you do. He seems to be distracted. Um, maybe he's helping, trying to help oversee packaging of honey into sacks to be carried back to the 100 acre wood. So he's temporarily distracted. And you pull the cork out of this Just bottle. Just a little bit. Not a lot. And this is like no honey you have ever tasted. You, the smell hits you first. Um and you, you're you're pretty pretty sensible uh, old old grand possum here. Uh, you're not really sure if magic is really a thing, yeah. but there is definitely something uh, pretty special about this honey. And you you don't really understand how or why, but you can understand how it makes the tree yeah. what it is, and how it might help fix the tree. Yeah, that's fair. If this piece that has that was stolen from from the tree can be brought back. I see. Um, you, the more you think about it with your cleverness, uh, you wonder if this is the original piece of honeycomb that was planted in the oh, ground. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. Well, she, she corks it back. Gran, Gran has, you know. You're definitely, your eyes got real big and you kind of like, you get that little, like when a cat first gets its hands on catnip oh. moment where you're just like, <gasps> it's the good, the good stuff. I can see everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's at one point, uh, Scraps, okay. like, takes a lid off the jar and just, like, buries his snoot into the jar and is, like, mm, 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 just, like, eating some honey. And, oh, my gosh. Uh, like, it's pulls, all over your fur. It pulls it out, and it's just, like, all over his face. And he's, like, I'm a good bear. <laughs> Personal hygiene is still a trait of a good bear. Don't worry. You're going to be back at the creek soon. That's true. The stream soon. <laughs> Uh, so you can package up some of this honey. It's, it's not everything, but like I said, you can package up some of it to bring back. Um, where would you like to go first on your, assuming that you're doing that, or are you just going to scatter off? 
<laughs> you could run away with I know. everything. I think we, I mean, we go back to the tree, I would say. To... It is a children's story. I hope we're going to do some happy community restorative <laughs> friendship things. Yeah. But if we don't have to. But no. this is also Honey Heist. <laughs> I know, I was going to say. It's also Honey Heist. <laughs> heist I time. mean, Gran is not telling anyone about the very weird lumps in her stomach right now. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, but uh, she she'll take uh, some people may be heisting honey. <laughs> she'll take the she'll take the fancy honey back to the tree. So as you get back to the tree, um, beef had taken off ahead of you, uh, and maybe apparently maybe met up with some reinforcements or someone some other bees coming to check on the situation uh, on your uh, on, on the status of things. So by the time you get back to the tree of honey, um, there are many bees, real bees, right bees. <laughs> Um, as well as a slightly uh, larger uh, right bee who uh, bobs up almost immediately to you, Gran. You know that she probably understands. She can probably sense what you are carrying from far away. Uh, And so she buzzes up in front of you uh, and says, uh, introduces herself, of course, uh, as Queen Elzebeth I uh, of the Tree of Honey. Hi, new friend. And she says, you found it. You found it, haven't you? Yeah. Here you go. Uh, obviously, she cannot take this from you. And she says, this way, this way. And she leads you uh. to the trunk of the tree. Um, <laughs> and uh, she, as you get to the trunk of the tree, she says, uh, we need to put it back in the ground. But you have done you have done a very great deed. And she says, you, you are not from these, these trees. You are not from this forest. Um, She says, but perhaps we should not be so selfish as to keep this for ourselves. And she says, if you take a piece of this to your forest, perhaps, she says, I don't know, perhaps the magic will grow a tree for you. So she is offering to let you take a small piece of this somewhat magical, perhaps, honeycomb. Uh, back to uh, your own forest or location of your choice, perhaps, um, as a reward. Um, and she also uh, looks at all of the the sacks that you are carrying, and she is acutely aware of what is in them. And she says, "This not all of this honey is mine to, to give away. It belongs to those that live in the forest. But I'm sure that they will be grateful for its return. And if you were to take some home with you, while you wait for your tree to grow, I don't think anyone would mind. And she waits until you put the piece in the ground as for a separate, you know, you take a piece for yourself or put it, leave a piece in the jar. And she immediately begins to buzz up back towards the top of the tree. She says, we have a great deal of work to do. And they all sort of, the bees all start to follow her up. Cool. So you have sacks full of honey. You could wander off. Yeah, I guess we go take some back. Um, By the time you reach what essentially is the center of the forest, so back past Rabbit's house, but before you get to the Six Pines, uh, you start to uh, see Piglet and Pooh, um, and they are coming to meet you. uh, And they meet you outside of Rabbit's house, and Piglet runs and knocks on Rabbit's door as well and says, Rabbit, come out, come out, come out. We have good news. Uh, and Pooh Bear walks up to you and says, uh, the bees are back. They told us. They told us that you have honey, that you have found things, that you have brought the honey back to the Hundred Acre Wood. These bees yeah, are narcs. Come out, close it up. The one, the one that, the one of these bags is not honey, just by the way. It's just full of um, tar. Jars and jars of tar. So don't worry about that. But the rest of Scraps them. Scraps goes, why have we been carrying around tar? <laughs> it's okay, Bob. Don't worry about it. It's for a project. We've got a pro- We've got uh. a project we're working on. I don't even know how to negotiate who should roll what because Grant is trying to pull a scam. Scraps is, like, innocently about to overturn it. <laughs> I mean, my descriptor does say incompetent, so... <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. But it also says distractingly adorable, so I feel like even if you're accidentally upsetting Grand Scheme, it doesn't mean (laughs) it isn't actually still helping her. That's true. We're still returning a bunch of it. We're still doing (laughs) a good job. We're here for a Uh, heist, though. 
So you are you uh, you are returning some of the sacks. Oh, yeah. Are you telling are you telling Pooh Bear, uh, honey connoisseur of the forest and bear among bears, uh, where the rest of the oh, honey yeah, is? Oh yeah, we can do. Or... We'll do that if we're not. Okay. Gonna, we'll t- but we're taking a cut, is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Pooh Pooh Bear sniffs. Winnie the Pooh sniffs, and he says, "I smell that honeycomb." That smells familiar. Oh, yeah. They, they said that this was a piece of the piece that you put in, and they gave it to us to make it a new forest, to make a new tree. He sort of grins and rubs his, his little bear tummy, and he says, I forgot I planted that. That's where the tree came from. You also told us this. Never mind. Doesn't matter. It's Winnie the Pooh. He is a bear, a bear of very small, very little the, the memory thing here. Still not he great. forgot a story he told you three hours ago. Wait a matter. minute. You planted that tree? <laughs> oh, here we go again. And that that honey <coughs> ah. um, and uh, he seems intrigued, and he asks you uh, if he can see the piece that you have, because he can smell it. He, he recognizes it. It's not nefarious or anything. I promise you, it's Winnie you the can, Pooh. You can see it, but I'm holding on to. You can see it. Yeah, you don't no, get to touch fine. it. See, not touch. And and he looks at the jar and he goes, "Yep, that's the one." Are you taking it to a new home? He seems excited. Yes. You'll have a tree like mine, and then you can share it with your four and our friends. And your friends. Uh, yeah. So, uh, essentially, I don't have a good ending. We have, we have, you have heisted some honey. You have returned some honey. You have solved some mysteries. Uh, and, uh, you can choose what you will do with the magic honeycomb that you have, uh, achieved and the honey that you get your cut. It's very important you get your cut. (laughs) Uh, but nobody went full bear. I think we came close. We came, to, I came close to going full <laughs> criminal, criminal because we kept rolling so yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. No one had to do a flashback because no one failed enough times. <laughs> uh, but congratulations on both heisting and rightfully returning some honey. Yay. Because if there's one thing about the Hundred Acre Wood, there are lessons we can and learn. And friends we make along the way. About sharing and caring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the friends you make along the way. Very fun. <laughs> That was great. That was Thank great. you so much. Yeah. Yay. Thanks. So, yay, honey heist. Super that was fun. great. Yeah. No, Gran almost went criminal like three or four times. Oh, <laughs> same. Yeah. Alistair kept running, rolling really well, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to, I kept having to like doing something criminal and then immediately <laughs> taking some honey. No, I had a flashback yeah. where, um, like, a prepared where, um, like, Gran, when she was a young woman, had gone, like, um, had gone into someone's cupboard to steal some honey, and then when they opened the cupboard, played possum and was dead, and then just said, oh no, looks like, looks, looks like your kid left a dead possum in the cupboard, like, in a, like, a really, like, high-pitched, like, fake voice, and then they're like, like your kid. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then someone was like, oh no, I gotta go tell someone else to clear that out, and then she ran away with the honey. Um, that was my, that was my, one of my prepared flashbacks. Uh, so uh, I I will say on behalf of myself and hopefully of all of, all of our players, I hope that you have yeah. all uh, enjoyed the role of play Honey Heist uh, Honey, 100 Acre Wood Edition, as I uh, called it in my little intro video, for those of you who haven't seen that yet. Uh, and uh, I believe, and Jonathan or Alice, feel free to correct me, we are done with streams for this semester, but we will be uh, picking up in... January, yes. correct? Late January. Middle, I think with middle of a whole new semester. Yeah, I think Go it's ahead. middle yeah. of January, and we'll have all new programming. I know there's a few things that have already been sort of planned out, uh, and we will start announcing all of the different games and players and everything as we go. And if you want to join us, uh, I'm sure you've seen yes. the bot in the chat telling you all about it. But you can email us at the email in the chat, which is like role of play dash d at bt.edu um, and ask us like if you wanted to be a part of the stream in any way we also have a form that you can find at bit.ly slash roll of play with a capital R and a capital P 
um, which has also, I'm sure, been around in the world. Um, and if you, you know, oh, wait, we're thankful to have you all here and have you all watching. So mm -hmm. if you have any questions, we're happy to talk about things. Yeah. And I definitely put together some resources on Honey Heist. This is a game that you can get all of the sheets that you need, all four of the, the sheets that you need to play uh, for, for free online. Um, so we will try to share that information out on some of our channels as well. If you want to try to run a Honey Heist game of your own, it's a lot of fun. It's very adaptable for all kinds of audiences. Uh, and I encourage people, especially if you're new to uh, role-playing or to GMing, this has been my gateway. And uh, it's been a lot of fun to do uh, Honey Heist. And hopefully in the spring you'll see me GMing some other things. Yeah. Uh, that are a little more I, I saw your, and, and playing in some I saw your name on the list. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my name is already on the list for at least two more things. Very exciting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so thank you so much. We're also going to be rating for the first time, and the channel will be rating Q times for playing uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Um, so feel free to stick around and say hey to all of them over there. And, um, you know, listen to some more great TTRPG uh, fun times. And as, as a GM, thanks to all of you players for coming on this adventure yeah. with me uh this was i've been plotting this for a long time uh and it was real it was, fun for it was me. real fun for us <laughs> yeah we love, love my winnie the pooh so much fun <laughs> and thank you to anthony our producer for the evening who has put in so much work yeah. and done so many things with all of our technical things so yeah great yep. and also thanks to uh kayla who's modding the chat yeah, yeah. thank you kayla yeah